Welcome to the State of the Heart podcast. This is a Kingdom Hearts podcast by myself, Damo279, and Water, WaterKH. Hi, it's me, WaterKH. There he is. Uh, what we want to do is we want to talk about various different aspects of the Kingdom Hearts series, whether it's where the state of the series currently is, hence the name, um, but it's going to be a lot of like lore discussions because the entire genesis of this idea is that myself and Monica H have tons and tons of conversations about Kingdom Hearts and I don't know, roughly two and a half hours into every single conversation, we'd say, <laughs> why didn't we record this? Why, it's interesting yeah. stuff. It's fun stuff. Why didn't we record this and put it out? We did it once. Yeah. We did it once. Yeah. After, <laughs> <laughs> after like our 50th conversation of like, okay, yeah. okay we'll record this one. Um, but yeah, now that Dark Road is released, um, and obviously there's very exciting things on the horizon for Kingdom Hearts, uh, first in my missing link, but then obviously Kingdom Hearts 4 on the horizon, we thought, yeah, let's do it. Let's actually commit to it. Let's make a podcast. Um, we've got a bunch of various topics that we've written out, um, and hopefully each episode will take care of, we'll tackle one to two topics a piece, um, or you just see where the conversation takes us. Um, we don't really have strict goals in mind for each episode because the way we usually have these conversations is that they're really, really free flow and they're they're a ton of fun. So we thought let's let's share it with you guys. So here we yeah. are. Here we are. What, what do you want to say anything, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean you kinda of, you said it all, so uh but uh <laughs> no yeah, so I think uh our first season we're kinda of just giving a little test run. Um so hopefully we'll find our, our flow as we go. But uh, I think we're gonna have right like uh, 20, 20 episodes for our first season. Um, kind of, we've we've already got a list of things we want to discuss. Um, but yeah, no, I'm just I'm, I'm really excited to finally do this because I know we, we've literally <laughs> we'll just have conversations and just go down endless rabbit holes, and then like four hours later, we're like, probably would have been useful to even just document it so we can refer back to it. But even you know, like I, I feel like people in the Kingdom Hearts community, especially, just like listening to people. Just, chat about the lore so like why not why not record it and, and put it out there so yeah yeah pretty excited exactly right and yeah we've thought that if we go over a topic or two per episode maybe we can get some feedback from you guys afterwards thinking like okay what did you think do you agree or disagree with our takes um because that's the cool yeah. thing about the kingdom Hearts series i suppose is that you know you can have all the theories in the world but <laughs> even something that seems set in stone absolutely clear cut and set in stone <laughs> can be immediately turned around and shown to be uh incorrect Unless it's- well, there's like so many games and, and media out there now that it's like we may talk about something and forget about this one key aspect or one element of it that you guys would, you know, just jump on and be able to tell us straight away that, hey, you know, they talked about this already and you're wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we just want to have a bit of fun um, because of our love of Kingdom Hearts. So, yeah, thank you guys for joining us on this little adventure. But um, yeah, so we want to be talking about today. Yeah, we wanted to start off with uh, with Dark Road, obviously. Um, as of the time of this recording, Dark Road is still very, very fresh. Um, the long-awaited finale finally dropped after... <laughs> Some people were starting to lose faith in our, in our poor two animators. I didn't lose faith. <laughs> Every time they released the announcement that they were pushing it back, I'm like, I understand. <laughs> but I'm ready for it, man. Make it better. That's yeah. good. Um, but yeah, no, people... I don't know, regardless of what the internet thought, it did eventually come out, which is terrific. Um, yeah, and I really, <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really I thought liked it was, it, it was worth, it's, it's, it's funny to say worth the wait, but I really do think it was worth the wait. Um, I think, yeah, waiting, because yeah, I think we, we've talked about this a lot, but it's like waiting for the drip, drip feeding is like, is good. And then wait, like, I don't know. I think waiting for anything kind of makes the experience better because you're like, you know, building up expectations or building up anticipation for what's going to happen. So, I don't know. Yeah, I think the wait made it much better for me, in my opinion. It's such a unique piece of Kingdom Hearts content. Like, I mean, obviously, Union Cross was very similar to it as well. But historically, Kingdom Hearts content, you know, it drops once, you get the entire game, and that's it. You know, the fandom is hyped mm-hmm. up, hyped up, hyped up, hyped up, hyped up until it reaches this crescendo. The game is released. Everyone gets their discussion out for it for a while, and then it goes away. But... Obviously, with Union Cross and then Dark Road, you know, for a while there, it was monthly Kingdom Hearts content. And granted, it was not always relevant <laughs> to the overall story. A lot of it is what you'd probably call filler. But still, like, yeah. having this consistent source of Kingdom Hearts content was terrific. I really, I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I think it's such a shame that most of the fan base, like, didn't, I don't know if wasn't paying attention or didn't really notice it that much. 
yeah. until basically the final three months of Union Cross, and then they're like, "Oh boy, it's getting good." Yeah, I think that um, yeah, the last few months of Union Cross are just so hype. Like every episode or like every release is like, "Man, what's gonna, what's gonna happen next?" Like, well, they just introduced like this meadow with Lorium and like this white coat person, and I don't know. Like it was, I don't know. It was just it was really exciting, and I think too, it like really established you as like the union cross person or union cross guy i guess it just i, I <laughs> feel like everybody myself included we're always like all right the updates go on live and i'm gonna hop into demos chat and we're all gonna experience at the same time your team was just reading off his phone with the translation saying it's the <laughs> like worst. i don't know it's like an experience i don't think you'll be able to or not you but like it's an experience i don't think i'll experience again in, in the same way it was just yeah i don't know it was, it was really cool it was definitely a lot of fun and a pretty unique experience for sure like <laughs> yeah i mean and I, re- I mean i really 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 hope from this point on wednesday um <laughs> release everything in english simultaneously with the japanese release <laughs> or at least you know only a couple hours behind as it was right you know, for, for union cross and dark road but yeah because i guess yeah dark road didn't release at the same time it was about think... five hours behind yeah yeah i know i was waiting on it and then i think i fell asleep or did i i don't remember what happened but i I do remember it releasing on Japan, and I was like, "All right, I'm off Twitter. <laughs> I'm not looking at it." Yeah, no kidding. That's uh, every, like I feel like that was my entire conversation with with <laughs> with my chat during that time was like, "Please just stay away from Twitter. We're almost there. We've waited a year. Yeah, <laughs> just stay a little bit longer. Like, right? We can do this. We can see it fresh." But um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was a ton of things to talk about in Dark Road itself. Um, yes, I have a list of things that I want to <laughs> talk about, but I'm all keen for to like to hear. I don't know if you want to like go over roughly the premise or you have points you want to talk about or, or whatnot. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could like, I've got the skeleton for the overall story here and we can sort of, obviously this would be quite spoiler heavy. So if anyone hasn't watched or, uh, you know, played Dark Road for themselves at this point, uh, this might be a time to jump off because I yeah, think our discussion yeah. from this point will assume you have basically knowledge of the entire Kingdom Hearts <laughs> yeah. franchise at this point and definitely including the new content of Dark Road um so yes yeah with that being said um yeah i think we'll just do a quick overview and then we can like really dive into the stuff that caught my eye there's like i've got my skeleton here and there's one sentence written in capital letters in red that's like this <laughs> one's pretty suspicious so yeah <laughs> um, all right i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready <laughs> okay so i guess it begins with well the, the dark road dark road proper story happens um when say not arise the scholar at calm i suppose um if we're going chronologically, well, I suppose before that, yeah, okay, because whole... that is one of my points too. Is like, uh, which I, I yeah, it was funny because Whale actually pointed this out to me. Um, but I'm curious when you think Dark Road happens in the timeline of the overall Kingdom Hearts story. Yeah, so like you, so Union Cross happens and then Dark Road happens. How much of a gap How is much between time there? Is so yeah. what they've said is that I get anyway. Now I shouldn't be worried about it, but yes, there are full spoilers from this point onwards. So. <laughs> um what we have been told which again this is subject to change i suppose but yeah uh what it seems like is that daybreak town is destroyed um well and data daybreak town at the same time so ephemer escapes data daybreak town gets the real one jumps mm-hmm. in a pod with scald and it it is quote unquote been implied that scald time traveled but that's less certain now and it yeah, looks yeah. like ephemer doesn't time travel so ephemer Again, it looks like he doesn't time travel. <laughs> he washes up ashore. Um, well, he's in the ruins. Among of the ruins so. of Daybreak Town, right? Yeah. There's a big like landmass in the background. And the camera yep. sort of pans towards that. So the implication that I take from that is that he goes off to that landmass and then uses this master defender to build a city around it. Um, okay. And we know that city is Skylarak Island. And then it is said that your Xehanort's great great grandfather, so that's five generations, okay. is. Um, is Ephema. So, I don't know. Ephema was rages. it great crater or was there... It was okay, yeah, great, 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 great Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Ephema reaches so be his... maturity himself. Yeah. Then has a kid. And then, yeah. Like, again, five generations after Ephema. Okay. And yeah. his generation is, I don't know, let's say 30, 35 years or maybe less. Like, I don't know. Oh, 25, okay. 35, somewhere. I don't know. I was thinking like 100 or like 80. But, but I... It, you know, <laughs> I don't think you start a family when you're 80 years old. Right? <laughs> True. That's actually, yeah. No, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, time to, uh, time to have kids. Like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, 
okay. guess anywhere between, I don't know, yeah, 25 to 35 years per generation. I don't know if there's like an official definition of generation, but let's, let's it. shoot in the middle of that and say 30 is the average. Um, uh, yeah. To me, that says only about 150 years have passed between okay. FMO washing a show. Well, you know, FMO washing a show plus a few years until he grows into, you know, an adult and then starts having kids. Now we're right. this many years later and Xehanort's born. Okay. At which point yeah. they take off and go to Destiny Islands. The thing with, yeah. obviously, time shenanigans yeah. is that Destiny Islands may flow differently to Scala, but assuming <laughs> no one's left Scala and at least Scala itself stays consistent to itself from the point at which Ephemer arrives to the point at which Xehanort leaves, I'm approximating to be about 150 years. Again, right. on, only based off that clue. Well, the other weird thing I think is, well, I guess, right, Xehanort shipped off, not shipped off, he's sent off to um, Destiny Islands, mm-hmm. and then when he comes back, right, it's a totally different scholar. Very different, yeah. From and his that's point what, of like view, what? 14 f- years, maybe? From 15? his point of view, yeah. But maybe it's yeah. a lot, much, 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 much longer from Scott's right. point of view, potentially. Yeah, okay, that's what I was getting at, yeah. It's like, because so, a lot seems to have changed from, like, the short amount of time he's been away. There's another clue as well where, like, Riku and Sora talk about that kid that left. Um, I think it's... I think it's in Birth by Sleep. No, I can't remember. But they refer to this, like, this... And it's implied to be saying, not this kid that was somehow able to leave. Um, oh, yeah? Okay. So, it's like, was that, a, was that a folklore story that was passed down? Or is that... Um, did, did they know of a kid that actually did leave? And again, from their point of view time moves really really quickly on destiny islands relative to everywhere else so it hasn't really been that long for them um mm-hmm. but as soon as they not leaves you know a ton of time passes and a kid's barely aged at all by the time they get back yeah I don't right know. i i kind of get why they've done it this whole in in universe mechanic of time moves differently in different worlds because it means you can just reuse characters yeah. and assets, right? <laughs> um, well, I specifically like Olympus and, and uh, Agrabah uh-huh, and Wonderland. Like, uh-huh. we get to their in Dark Road and it's like things are happening. And then in Kingdom Hearts, it's like they just happened kind of thing. I mean, it, it kind of like, has to be, right? Like, Mal- yeah. Aurora's curse has been put on Enchanted Dominion. And Terra gets mm-hmm. there and Enchanted, you know, Aurora's curse is still being put on Enchanted Dominion. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, Xehanort leaves as a kid. And he gets back there as an old man 65 years later or whatever it is. I mean, I don't th- think we actually see It wouldn't see have been 65, him. right, yeah. Well, um, like when I we guess actually- we don't know at that point because we don't really have context for what's happening when he does get there. When he's an old man. But it's before, it's, yeah, it's before the trial though because Sora goes there. Oh, Wonderland, you, the trial. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was thinking of... um. Uh, the Enchanted Dominion, where Maleficent oh. is, right? So, she's put the curse on the world. And then, at some point, Xehanort has to come back there and tell her how to time travel at the very beginning of Birth by Sleep. Because Terra is, like, chasing... Oh, it's Terra's yep. first world, and it, where he goes to, and is looking for clues about where Xehanort's gone. And mm-hmm. Maleficent's like, oh, maybe I did meet someone. And basically, <laughs> you know, leads him astray. Yeah. But right, right. from that point of view, I mean... Like less than a year has passed, surely. Like I, I don't know, in universe, how long that curse lasted for. It was it Sleeping Beauty, right? Uh, yep. I don't think it's that long. It's there's no way it's that long. Yet, from a Kingdom Hearts point of view, like they've left yeah. and eighty years have passed, and they get back, and it's like, yep. <laughs> yeah. So that that world line must be traveling pretty slow compared to wherever else they annoyed at. Is that? Yeah, which, I mean, it's happening, I guess, for all Disney worlds when it's convenient. So, could you... Yeah, no, exactly. So, could you then yourself, like, travel to a world that has, like, a slower rate of time? And would you not age as much? I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, from your point of view, you're kind of time traveling, right? Like, if you arrive at a world where one day spent there equals, you know, 60 years from another world's point of view, then is that really different from time traveling? At I all? guess true. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of my read on the master of masters at first. Like when, when I guess we hadn't actually had confirmation that he time traveled yet. When union crosses finale, I was like, mm-hmm. well, did he just 
and this is when Dark Road had just come out and introduced the idea of these worlds running on different timelines. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Well, did he did he just hide in a world where time travels differently? And he mm-hmm. didn't actually he didn't actually time travel. He just because why go to all the effort? <laughs> yeah, if you right. can just wait a couple of days and the, yeah. rest, the world that you need to have moved has already moved that far. True. But I uh, guess yeah, I guess that makes sense. I guess he has actually time traveled. Um, yeah well he's now in unreality too so like he's committed some taboo or something right or he's just found a way to get there i mean i think that's the that's the point right is that he well then he's trying to find a way i i guess my impression was that he was trying to find a way back but maybe not i guess if he's trying to go there and summon kingdom hearts i don't know yeah we still really don't know we, we've had no, no idea honestly what, the, what the his is, intentions yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is really cool i actually really like i don't know that that seems i like not knowing things <laughs> yeah no it, it is fun having i don't know a villain whose motivations i mean is he a villain we still don't really yeah know right that that's what i love like is he a uh... villain and i love how they spun xehanort's story because like personally i don't think he's a villain like from so and that was the whole thing right like from your point of view, you're doing the right thing. But from somebody else's point of view, you might be doing a bad thing. So it's like, it's really left up to like yourself if you think you're doing right or wrong. Um, and like, right, since we're playing from Sora's point of view from all the games so far, it's like, yeah, Xehanort is clearly the villain. He's like the bad guy. You know, he's turning everybody to darkness. And then, you know, he summons Kingdom Hearts and tries to destroy the world. But then like when we see his backstory, it's like, well, he's trying to cleanse it. He's trying to, to you know, be the person in the prophecy or whatever, like the child of destiny. So, I don't know. That's that's what I gather, at least. It's like, I don't think his motivations were necessarily evil. Yeah, they definitely... I mean, I don't know if retcon is the right word, but um, Kingdom Hearts 3 kind of started this, right? Where it's like, he, yeah. he was doing... I think it came out of, like out of nowhere for a lot of people, and I probably would count myself among those people. Like the final, the final gasp he has basically is saying that he wants to put you know the world has been too corrupted by darkness, and he wants to to do a purge of the entire thing. Mm-hmm. And he's going to use Kingdom Hearts to do it. It seems like it kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, you no, know, yeah. Which it it's in the reports, like it's in Zaynon's report from Birth by Sleep that he's kind of talking about. Um. You know, it, it's it's something that can be channeled. It's not like necessarily an evil thing, mm-hmm. um, but it still is a little jarring when he like he seems to <laughs> relish the darkness. Like he really does seem to enjoy. <laughs> like, and I think probably yeah. and killing Ericus is probably like okay. He's irredeemably a bad guy here. Like, there's no, I don't know, care what retcons you do, <laughs> that one is still pretty friggin' hard to justify yeah i honestly don't even remember is he trying to like strike terra down and he strikes no it's oh no he's trying to strike down ventus right and ericus is yes ericus is and... going oh shit xehanort's gonna make the keyblade here he's gonna do it he's gonna summon kingdom hearts i don't have a choice here i have to if i kill Ven, then he can't he can't go through with it yeah i don't want to do this but i have to do this and then terra gets in his way and is able to overcome ericus um but then yeah, once once he does, Zaynor takes the opportunity and blasts him in the back with a with a ball of darkness and, <laughs> yeah, and kills him. Right, which is really cool. I don't know. It <laughs> when Zaynor basically takes in Hoda's heart in this, it's almost like a cool callback to. Oh, is that how Ericus got the idea to like stash his heart within Terra's body because because he literally witnessed Hoda do it? Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah, I thought I, dark, and that the other thing too with that, um, because right, I and that's the thing, right? Like, I feel like all of this, all the things that we're seeing, and the like, you know, the what you just said, Erica's hiding inside of Terra's heart, and Aqua being able to, to, you know, change it back to the the Castle Oblivion to, um, land of departure. Mm-hmm. There's another example I wanted to bring out, but it's like it's all these things that are like passed down, um. Because, like, right, Scala was, like, this, re- not retro, Victorian era. I don't know, actually, maybe not Victorian. Uh, but, you know, like, a different Scala, and then it changed. 
or at least see like i guess that's the question is like which i guess is for missing link not dark road discussion but um because i guess if that's on the island then it can't possibly be the the, the city that, that then we see on the water on top of the water right yeah yeah i don't i don't know all right yeah, it, it, it's going back to that question of, okay, how much time has actually passed? Like, does Destiny Islands run on the same time that Scala does? Or yeah. does Scala move much quicker relative to Destiny Islands? And so, we say, you know, it's been gone for 14 years, but in that time, you know, centuries have passed. And mm-hmm. it now looks radically different. Or has something happened there? Did Scala get kablooied? Like, everything went to shit? Well, and then they had to rebuild they are... it. True, true. But if they are separate, like if, if that's like, you know, Scala on land and then there's the Scala on the because I guess right, like the Scala that we see when, you know, Brain gets there or when some lookalike Skull is handing off Xehanort to the player. Yeah. Like that's more like a town, right? Like that seems more like a city. And then when we're looking at the people, like when we're following the young Xehanort adventure, it's like that place is like a school. Like, they're trying to evacuate all the kids off the islands, right? So it's more like these little islands are like a school. But I guess in... They do seem to act like a city, though. Because, like, when you explore it in Remind, in Remind it's like, exactly, yeah. it, it there's, like, all these different canals. And, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I think Odin know. says he's going to evacuate the remaining... What is he called? Students, students right? right? Yeah. Um, but I'm assuming that's because that's the building he's currently in, and that's what he can... It's what he can do right this moment to avert the disaster, but but isn't like isn't Balder like destroying the entire like landscape? It seems that way. So maybe it's like a case of okay, well, the light must survive, so we got to protect the Keyblade Wielders first. And hey, if there's anyone left yeah. alive after that, good for them. But um, yeah, I I hope I hope we will get to see more of Scala. Because it's like at the end of Melody of Memory, he goes, well, Mickey, you're going to go explore Scala, right? Right. So presumably that would be a Scala that is post the Dark Road ending. We're going to get to explore, you know. Oh, have... okay. We've only seen, I got it right mind. I was going to say we've only seen Scala in like the dream of Xehanort. Right. Which seems but to be this climactic moment right here. Yeah. But go on. What do you mean? No, I was just gonna say, you know, have we have we ever seen Scala that isn't associated to Xehanort that Well when Brain like arrives. Definite... Right, right, but that's the other the other Scala. The yeah. But I mean, I guess if he is he's doing all his studies and stuff on that island or on the on the the Scala that we know from Kingdom Hearts three, so I guess I don't know. I don't know. I think I was just trying to follow a train of thought and I lost it. <laughs> um <laughs> That's okay. All right, hang yeah, on. Yeah. Before we get before we get too insane, should we do like a quick a quick recap of just so you know everyone's aware, um, <laughs> like the Dark Road story, and then we can like we can jump on that. <laughs> so I think I think we started at Zane or Rise of Scala, and then we immediately got <laughs> got off. Yeah, the rest. I, I kind of thought. <laughs> no, that's great. Like it was, I kind of already broke what we were trying to do. Okay, so yeah, Zane was basically contacted by his future self, and essentially said that if you want to see these kids in your dreams, um. You, waiting on this island here will not lead you down that path. You'll just, you'll, you just have a quiet, uneventful death. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to do something, you know, take that step forward and, and start your life. And again, now it completes the time loop that he he himself will eventually cause later in his own life, and it's very self fulfilling. I don't know. I, I do quite enjoy time travel in a lot of media, and this one still has a touch of confusion to it, but it. I don't know. Right. Within itself, it seems to make a bit of sense. And we can touch on the whole like singularity thing later <laughs> because I think it I think it's relevant to Zane or its right. travel loop. But um Yeah, all right. So then Brute fast forward a little bit. So now he's developed a friendship with Ericus and they're all good pally pals. Um and then I guess Dark Road properly kicks off when Odin sends the upper class mates on this quest to explore the outside worlds. Mm-hmm. And he says that this is this is their test of the mark of mastery. This is anyone that makes it back will be named a master right which is such a not yeah yeah keep going <laughs> no, no, no if you if you want to stop at any point like let's let's do it like because i think uh no nah, i just I, I that's such an interesting concept to me like 
we're just going to throw you in the deep end and then like right if you come back then good job <laughs> like the same thing for like i feel like sora and riku's even though there's kind of got shifted um kind of off focus but then like i don't know sora saved the world countless times and now that he failed the one time during the exam he it's failed like, no nope, not a master no nope. <laughs> fail yeah even though, it's- even though he's the one that's taking care of anson and Zemnis at that point and marluxia <laughs> it's like <laughs> all right all right Yen said what, what's what's going on here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean obviously from a gameplay point of view like you you i don't know probably do feel the temptation to hold him back still so he has something to to achieve to strive for and then eventually you can yeah. call him a keyblade master i don't know i don't know if you want to do that at the end of the series or whatever um i guess yeah <clears throat> yeah you guess Oh, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. I feel like I keep interrupting you. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Um, but yeah, I guess um, I guess because Sora kind of fell to darkness. Right. Like, um, you know, he, he chased the darkness until he fell asleep, right? Um, whereas Riku didn't succumb to that darkness. Like, he was just, you know, being there as, as Sora's dream eater. But he's already kind of had his run in with darkness and succeeded in, in kind of getting rid of it. Or, you know, like, what? He accepts it. So he's Twilight, right? Um, the road to where Dawn. Sora kind of just falls falls into it head first, unintentionally, I think. But I think he does have a lot of darkness that we haven't seen, all, like yet. I mean, he, in theory, he's still harboring one of the thirteen. Um, Sora is. Well, sorry, sorry. I mean, he was for a while, but. Uh, obviously it's it's back with ven now but it oh it yeah, was yeah. hiding in his body for quite a long time um, yeah it wouldn't surprise me if it's left some sort of a trace on him which again we may oh, and that maybe yeah. we see in rage form and anti form but yeah i yeah i agree well and even in cage one with his shadow yeah. which actually right i was just so i've been yeah looking through all the cutscenes for um the wayfinder project but yeah so riku is like yeah i can draw out your shadow and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this right, is the thing, right, this right, is the thing right. from Dark Road. And it's like, so even though, like, yeah, Sora is not the, like, I don't think anybody thought this at first, but like, you know, Sora isn't like Ventus where he is pure of heart. And, you know, they talk about this in Dark Road where like he, him, Balder, and Xehanort are essentially the same character. Very similar except characters, yeah. yeah. Sora is the one, he's like more prone to light, whereas Balder and Xehanort seem to, to you know, go towards the darkness. But they're still like pretty like they're the what the empaths or whatever. I've been hearing that a lot. It's, um, it's a, yeah, like, a shortcut word for what. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, the, the game is trying to say combining. Yeah. Um, I found that really interesting. Just how like, you know, Sora and Xehanort essentially the same person in terms of how they interact with people. But like the way they've interpreted the world by interacting with people is, is vastly different, which is very cool. 100 percent. I mean, it's always like everyone shits on Tara, right? But I don't know. I mean, Sora rocks up and always seems to meet the good, the good person at, at the mm-hmm. start of each world and gets caught along on this adventure that I mean, no matter what, no matter if it's data or if it's the real world or if it's memories or whatever, it always seems to go basically the same way. Um, and, you know, he's the hero. He defeats the bad guy, yada, yada, yada. But it's like when Tara rocks up or someone like Insane <laughs> rocks up, they tend to meet the bad person first. Yeah. Um, and well, and it's like, and, it, and because, and they they talk about this too, but like you know, you can't disrupt the order. You know, different worlds have different ways of doing things. Yeah. So it's like when they get to a world, you can't just instantly think, "Hey, this is a bad person." Or in the case of Terra, like I don't think right, that's like his first experience even going out into the worlds. And so it's like, how can I know this person is bad? I don't know. <laughs> like my point of reference is Ericus and Xehanort and Aqua. And now Ventus, like yeah. As far as we know, in theory, we, right? he knows four people in his entire life. Yeah, and then so it's the like fifth person he yeah. meets is Maleficent. And it's like okay, well, yeah. It's like, <laughs> can you really say this person is bad? This barometer like, is pretty, know. yeah, pretty limited. Yeah. Oh god. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, no. So I don't know. Even if you hand wave the idea of like, okay, well, this is just what what the marker mastery for them happened to be. It just okay. We're going to go out there, and you're going to broaden your horizons. You're going to see what the worlds are like. Mm-hmm. And let's say they make it back, and they're all named masters. I mean, the game itself sets you up to distrust that. Like Boulder's like, well, so I think Eric is saying to Boulder, like it's it, it sounds like 
they're not expecting them all to make it back. It's just very sinister. I, right. I, I don't know. It's very. No, I, I agree with that. It's. And I like what they're doing because, right, because me and Whale just rewatched Star Wars, mm -hmm. which I think Star Wars is definitely a candidate for being in Cage 4. Oh, yeah. Just straight off the bat. You have bloodlines. You have the, you know, what's really good. Is it is it the dark side or is it the light side or the Jedi? Like, and like the Jedi are so like they're so <laughs> manipulative. Like you, they're the good, quote unquote good guys. But it's like they manipulate every situation they're in like without fail like they always have something they want to push like they have an agenda or they have an idea or they think they're just right without any any background so like i really think that namora is gonna like deep dive into that especially with now him with the latest right in in dark road, in dark they, road yeah i could be thinking about this wrong but don't i think there's no, a scene think, that's I like think you're right on it yeah yeah like you know your perception is what is the basis for good or bad like it's not I think I think it, that's a bit too much, but like you know, if you're doing something that you think is right, then you are doing the right thing or something. I think that's in the scene where they're meeting the upper class men in Hades or or the underworld. I think, and it's the the upper class men basically say we're not here to judge or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if I can find that, but yeah, I mean that that goes back to the it's the old like Hamlet quote that Final Fantasy fifteen references the. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so that. Yeah. Which even harkens back to like scripture, I think, in like the book of James or something with my <laughs> with my upbringing of Christianity. Oh, yeah. But like there's like a, some kind of chapter or verse or whatever that talks about if you think it's wrong and you do it for you for that man, it's sin or something like that. So right. it's like a really old philosophical question that they're bringing up, which I love. I, I like talking about that kind of stuff. But I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> I like it when, like, you know, it's it's not clear who's the good guy. And yeah, they started it with the master of masters. Like, I feel like, you know, KH1 to, to present, like, or not present, but like before Union Cross, it was like, Sora's the good guy, light's the, the best, you know. The dark, the darkness is what we need to purge, we need to get rid of. Um, Why? Well, actually, I guess that's not true. Because, right, Riku's that's like, the training memories. I'm not going to yeah. choose. Yeah. 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 So I guess yeah, no, it's really always been this like, uh, and I guess they have too been saying like there needs to be a balance, which I guess also Star Wars that also says there needs to be a balance between good and and dark. But well, then there's the ones light, that like hyperfixing, yeah. or sorry, yeah, light and dark. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but I think it's been like, like put more into focus with especially the master of masters because it's like and and now with with the uh dark roads story it's like xehanort thought he was doing the right thing he and was so like the master of masters he was know, convinced, probably is, yeah yeah i keep getting us off tangents <laughs> no no i think this is this this is the point right this is what we would always do so it's like okay well <laughs> let's let's make yeah. a podcast out of this all right so Odin sent the other classmen out to explore the worlds. Um, and yeah, so Baldur has that conversation with Ephema that he's basically worried that his sister might not make it back. He's very concerned for her. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess we don't necessarily see it, but at some point they're going to, the upper classmen will arrive at the Enchanted Dominion um, and they're going to see this world that has, where everyone's basically fallen asleep because of the curse Maleficent put on the world. Mm -hmm. And then... It's the one interest. I don't know, because none of this happens if Hoda doesn't run off to try and take on Maleficent on her own, right? That they wake up in the morning, the upperclassmen, and realize that Hoda's gone. And they go off to try and save her. And at this point, right. I don't know, like, Baldur's inner darkness surely is, I guess, well, an active force at this point, because, like, it's not, it hasn't done the whole corrupting him in the, the over those seven days yet. But... Well, it it wasn't his darkness, though, wasn't it? So we see the scene multiple times. So the first time we see it is Maleficent using like a fire attack on her. But the truth, I think, is that yeah, it's it's Baldur runs in the room, and it's oh, his and that's darkness when it that actually. Off. I don't think Maleficent's there oh. at all. I think it's I, Maleficent. I don't think is involved in this. <laughs> I think it's oh, literally wait, so like he just it's just the darkness. made her yeah. see what. Oh. Hoda never speaks, right? It's it's only... Oh, sorry. No, she does. She does. But yeah, from her point of view, it was, um, you know, this big evil dragon. But in reality, it was actually the darkness within Baldur that did it. 
So do you notice that hmm. she calls out Balder in her own memory, but then when the, the three other upperclassmen run in, she finishes the sentence by saying, needs help. Oh, I didn't notice that. So, okay, that can, that joins that. Uh, yeah, I think if you link all those scene. three together, it's, yeah, it's Balder needs help. And that's the clue. But this is the tip off before you actually realize <laughs> wow, that, yeah. that Balder's done it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so they run in and they're also killed by the darkness, basically. And then, yep. if, if you then yep. if you then play the scene of him, like, freaking out and, like, it's just, it's just cool, like, I don't know, metaphor is not the right word, but allegory maybe i don't know but the whole like he, he just he's only left on his own to suffer and he hasn't doesn't have any friends with him he just sits internally mm-hmm. with his own darkness and it just deepens and grows and deepens well, and grows and it's like yeah i loved seeing that if it's he, the shadow growing on the wall behind him but is he in like a solitary confinement so like odin put him in because when i first saw that scene i was like that can't be his is he like that can't locked be. away i think it was the infirmary that they said right he's in the infirmary Oh, okay. That but makes more sense. But I was like, boy, it looks that's miserable. Nuts. That is the way. Like, it's. Well, it's like padding on the walls, right? I, maybe I'm misremembering. I, that's what it looks like. I've got it open right now. It's just, yeah, they're all the world walls are square. Like, I could believe it if yeah. you said they're padding, but if not, there's some sort of tile. It's just one. I, okay, actually, I can see that happening, right? Odin sends them all off, and then when they come back, he's the only one there, and it's like, all right. Oh, it does. But Odin doesn't know that he is. He's harboring, harboring darkness, right? Doesn't he? <clears throat> it comes to a surprise to him, right? Doesn't he? <laughs> I don't know. The fact that he's like, you cross paths with Boulder and that Boulder oh. was forbidden from seeing his friends during that time. Like something that could have brought okay. him back potentially, right? Like if he actually spent time with his friends and, you know, learned to <clears> grieve <throat> normally instead of, I guess it's the whole depression thing, right? It's like, it's, yeah. I don't say the word, but it seems like that's what it's an allegory for. Like, you know, this solitary, you know, the things that could have yeah. helped him out, like getting through it with, with his friends are all denied him. He's, forced to spend time in isolation in this grayscale awful room with nothing in it but a bed mm-hmm. and a desk without a like um, yeah and he just and they're what they're kids she's gone like, i don't know dude that's nuts the, the dialogue here is funny as well like they couldn't protect her and now they're gone too he doesn't i think he says it's his fault at one point i need to actually like write the script down um and then he starts to get like angrier and angrier and angrier and yeah I love when he like stands up into like because like the shadow Perfectly like goes into, into the shadow, it, yeah, and then That's he really cool. steps into it, yeah. So at this point, I mean, they're basically one person at this point, right? Like the darkness even says, "You can't, you can't kill me without killing him." At this point, We're, we've basically Which, become one. Yes, I wanted to touch on that, uh, some at some point. <laughs> um, we can do that now if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um. Because it kind of it kind of shifts ahead to Bragi or Braggy. I don't actually know how to say his name. Right. Um, but right, he's supposedly one of the thirteen lights that's supposed to be killed. Actually, let me let me put a pin in that. Let's let's finish and then I'll come back. Because <laughs> that's a whole yeah. rabbit hole. Let's let's finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So. Okay. So Baldur is basically picked off his sister. Uh, accidentally picked off his sister. Well, he's darkness as anyway. Um, and then also kills the three other upperclassmen. Um, Mm -hmm. and I suppose then he comes back to Scala is like mortified. And so Odin puts him in isolation in the infirmary and says that, I think at this point he says the upperclassmen have gone missing, right? Like it must be now because he says Boulder can't come. He's sick or he's, we can't, we can't tell him. So it kind of has to be now. It kind of has to be after it's already gone to hell. Because, right, we wouldn't have gone out months later. No, no, I think it'll happen it over the course of like a, like a yeah. week or two. Um, um, yeah, I guess it would be. Well, right, yeah, they would send them out and then, yeah, Balder gets sick and then he's, I think he's in there for seven days. He's right? in there for seven days, yeah. And then when he comes yeah. out, he's like fully united with the darkness. And I'm assuming Which would have been when he that's meets. when we made up with him. Yeah. And he takes us to the underworld at that point. Yeah yeah um um no no well i guess yeah i guess i don't know how long is in between that but i think doesn't he talk to uh ericus so like that's, we meet him that's when he's three, worried about right? his sister and that's oh. when we haven't even we haven't gone on out of our adventure yet and that's it must be before so he's, well, but, he's worried about his sister that's the clue that his darkness is inside him 
well, I guess not the clue, but in hindsight, it's like, um, you know, everyone's light reflects off him and it just, it, it, it kind of casts a shadow on him. He, he is not a projector of light. He is where right. the shadow kind of falls. The shadow falls upon him. Okay. But I'm, isn't it? Cause they only go missing because they're trying to gather the, the order, right? Or like the objects of power in each world. Isn't that why they go missing? No. So, okay. They're off on their adventure, right? They they just mm-hmm. observe. So, the first thing they observe that we actually... I mean, maybe they've been to other worlds first. But the first thing they actually observe is that um, Maleficent's put the curse on this world. Um, and, but, you know, what can we do to stop that? That's the order. That's how things are here. We can't we can't do anything about that. And mm-hmm. then, then for whatever reason, Hoda goes and atta- tries to attack Maleficent. So maybe maybe she can't you know she's so pure of heart she can't stand it so she's like you know screw this I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kill Maleficent that'll right. that'll wake everyone up okay this is me maybe assuming a little bit here maybe I'm incorrect mm-hmm. Boulder tries to help her so he takes off this is before Dark Roads even started he takes off and basically his darkness is responsible for killing her at that point mm-hmm. I don't think Maleficent I don't think she fights Maleficent at all I think right it's which. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. From from what we've been shown, at least it seems like she's. We have no reason for them to be, to think that they're lying yeah, anymore, right? Yeah. Like it seems that. It they wouldn't make sense. Yeah. That Boulder has actually attacked her. Yeah. Boulder's darkness has attacked her anyway. Um, yeah. So then, the other classmen realize that she's gone missing. Three of them go off to try and save her. Kablamo, those three are dead as well. Um, yeah. At that point, so th- this is the entire plan, right? So the, the darkness is trying to get the upperclassmen to sub- summon Kingdom Hearts. So right. So it it has killed the three classmates. You know, Vidar, right. Vali, yep. and Vala want revenge, but they can't bring themselves to actually kill Volda because they're like, we can't do that. Yeah. So we'll purge. We'll purge everything of darkness instead. So we'll summon Kingdom Hearts, and its power will purge the worlds of darkness. So that's this is Darkness's plan. It's okay, go along with it, summon Kingdom Hearts. They think it will, you know, work and purge the worlds of darkness. The thing is, Odin is the one that leaked them that plan in the first place. Odin's like, well, I mean, you could try summoning Kingdom Hearts. That might work, <laughs> but don't do right. it. Hey day, don't yeah. do it. It's forbidden. But it would work. It but would definitely hundred percent work. Let me tell you about it. Let me tell you how to do it. Yeah. But so they might so yeah, Vidar has to come back and try and talk to Odin again before before everyone goes missing. So before at least the upper classmen take off, uh, lower classmen take off. Um, he's he's going there to talk about his friends, right? He's like, we've seen a bunch of darkness. We need to purge the worlds of this darkness. We need to do that. Like, cause we can't we can't kill Baldur. He killed his sister. We can't kill him. He's got darkness inside him. We need to purge the worlds of darkness. Right. So. Yeah, so that must happen before they start formulating their plan. And then, okay, then saying, then then Odin's like, "Hey, the upperclassmen have gone missing. You need to go find them." <laughs> like, and then that's, which is where the Balder's sick at that point, right? So that must be right when he gets back, though, right? Yeah. So this is after he's already killed his sister at this point. Yeah, and and the friends that he's quote unquote. Well, I can't tell him okay. about the sister because she's one of the missing ones. I don't want to upset him. So he's in the infirmary at this right. point. He's 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 at some point in his seven days at this point. Mm-hmm. This is how I read it, at least. And then, I can get on board with that. Yeah. Then you know we go off to the various worlds. We go to Agrabah. We go to Wonderland. We go to Beast Castle. Yada yada yada. We come back, um, and then we're basically like we're relieved of duty. Well, I guess we, we meet the upperclassmen during those during those times. Um, mm-hmm. And we sort of find out what they're up to, because at that point they are trying to summon Kingdom Hearts to purge the worlds. Yeah. Um, and Vor goes along with the plan. Um, then we get back, and Odin's like, he really relieves us of duty. He's like, no, 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 no. Okay, that's enough. Like, you're done. Stand, yeah. stand down. <laughs> and then at that point, Bald is like, hello. Um, let's go to the underworld. And right. That's when. Yep. So his his seven days must be up at that point. I, I don't know if they've yep. only just ended. But I think they would have, because right, that's when he's like he stepping up, into the role, joins the darkness, yeah. and is fully on board with it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he basically 
gets them into the deal with Hades, which goes awry. Hades, so I didn't notice this on my first time at all, but it's not Hades that actually throws them into that dark corridor. It's it's Boulder yeah. off screen doing it. Yeah, because he's like surprised and then he turns around, right? Yes, and then he's like, what the hell? Yeah. Um. And yeah, obviously at that point, Boulder's plan is to pick him off one by one. Um, mm-hmm. Which he succeeds in gloriously. Which... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, go on, what were you saying? No, nah, I was going to say, why didn't he kill off um, Vor before? Because, like, she kind of survives until the very end. But, like, if he was off with her alone, couldn't he have just offed her when he found out that they weren't going to continue the plan? When was he with her alone? Uh, right, because he doesn't find out until after they get back together. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, basically once then he, gets then he back. pairs off with Bragai. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So if I don't. Vor doesn't come along to the underworld with us. It's just the, it's just the six of us that go. Yeah. So it's the six lower classmen. Yeah, without Vor being one of them. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's Bragai, Zaynor, and Ericus that go to Hades, and basically make the deal that one of them's gonna have to stay behind. And all right. So okay, and all three of them take off. I think they find. So they find Cerberus on the way. Boulder interrupts and he's like, hey, I'm here. You two go ahead. Let me stay with this one. So like he, at that <laughs> point, he's actively trying to split everyone off. And yep. he would have killed Bragai at that point. Right. Um, which is what we think has happened, right? Like at, the, at that point, the audience is like, oh shit, I guess he... The implication is, even though we don't see it, so it's sus- it's suspect, but the implication mm-hmm. is that um, Boulder has killed Bragai at that point but then Hades is like just one though right and it, so he's saying oh yeah only uh Ermod is is that the one he said he's gonna stay because he said he mentioned someone that's dead right and then we're like no two are dead right am I misremembering that <laughs> um uh let me get my head straight here so we, we go a little bit further on and basically we, yep. we meet Ermod um and uh together um and yeah we keep going a little bit further and then we actually meet the lower the upper classmen mm-hmm. uh, and i think he sends them back to make sure brown guy's okay that's so interesting i only just noticed this now he says he needs to make sure that brown guy's okay not boulder as well he's already onto it but make sure brown guy's all right ah uh, <laughs> yeah and yeah, so I guess Bragai is correct. He is saying it was 100% onto him. Um, I think earlier on when they when Boulder's like, you guys go ahead. Like Zaynot does definitely shoot him a look. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. What the hell are you up to? <laughs> yeah. Oh, because it doesn't... He, yeah, he can feel it, right? That's the whole thing. It's like he, he senses something's off. Oh, that's so great. Like, you don't notice it, but yeah, he, he closes his eye. Like, he just squints at him for like a, only a couple seconds. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you up to? Yeah. And he's, yeah, he's very curious when Boulder's like, you guys go ahead. Go on. Off you go. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> In the underworld. Yeah. I'm this Giant dog. <laughs> pooch. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, he literally says, Brag Eye, be careful. Boulder, I'll see you later. Count on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and which I guess definitely tips off Brag Eye to the, the, the idea. Which I, that, yeah. Okay. He is really suspicious of Boulder right now. Which, honestly, I wasn't suspicious of Boulder when I was playing it. Not at all, yeah. I was just taking it all in. Again, this is why I think it's so... I think I'm doing the right thing by trying to double this stuff because there's all these like minor facial expressions and animations that I never read because I'm, I'm too busy looking at the text box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, but yeah, okay. So yeah, they meet up with... Um, Hermod and Erd who have just arrived because again they all got like blitzed, blipped into a portal into the underworld mm-hmm. um, and then yeah they say they're going to go back and help out the help out the two that are still fighting Cerberus right and we go and have our chat and yeah he, again he's very suspicious I hope it's just my imagination like he's saying it to himself like he yeah he's <laughs> He's convinced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I like. I like that. I don't know. Because it, it just shows how 
because right he's always we've always only seen this like calculated side of him and so like to see that at its early stages like he's already you know planning out his moves in his head like he's like all right i know i should be suspicious so like i'm just gonna you know keep aware of what's happening kind of like i don't know it's very cool very interesting yeah all right yeah and then we made our four upperclassmen that have all been bipped already um which they come back from the final world which everybody probably noticed yes yeah they said that they were woke up in a place where it was like endless sky and ocean didn't they i forget what the exact wording was but um yeah very 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 cool and yes yeah, so these guys aren't yeah because again these guys at this point aren't aware of the plan to purge the world so like why would why would he do that that doesn't make any oh shit it's to to rid the worlds of darkness yeah so yeah at yeah. this point so yeah vidam vidam must go back after this point and talk to odin about what can we do and he's like, you could, you could summon Kingdom Heart. I mean, don't, you're not allowed to, but this is something you could definitely do and would definitely work. Um, right. So when does that fit in? Because so I kind of was confused when that happened. That that must have been before their trip, right? Before the kids. So otherwise you wouldn't the, say they the were lost. The trip. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So by the time our, we start playing Dark Road and we go on our first adventure, yeah, four kids are already dead. Right. And Dude. Vidar is at this point trying to act out the plan to steal all the, all which the I feel like trinkets. yeah, out of all the games like Union Cross and Dark Road are definitely like, like the darkest and the most violent. Which is like Cage Three kind of went there, and I don't think it hit as hard because we'd seen it in the trailer, yeah. like stripping Sora of all his friends and like that wail of like defeat. Like it still like hits me, but it, like this in Union Cross and Dark Road, it's like no, nah, he just slaughtered all of these children. Yeah. <laughs> like these kids just went to war for their leaders like it's it's pretty brutal like it's nuts i don't know like i don't think we'll ever see it in like a 3d rendered no like a back cover no because i don't know it's it's pretty brutal <laughs> i don't know it's like you put this you put this these dark stories into this chibi format and it's like oh it's so cute but it's like wow this is really <laughs> this is really bad <laughs> Yeah, it is so interesting, right? Like, the potentially the friendliest looking art style. Like, it's a pop-up book. Make your own little happy looking little character. Yay. And it's... <laughs> and then he's dead. Just <laughs> endlessly butchering kids in these stupid games. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes, they decide to split up. I'm just re-watching the cutscene where they confront... Where mm-hmm. they find needs help. And then she vanishes. Huh, so Hoda's heart doesn't fly away at that point. Interesting. The sisters? Yeah. It's funny because if you look at Maleficent, she's almost like see-through here. I think that's a clue that it's not really her as well. Oh, okay. Like the wings are transparent and I guess they're meant to be, but the head almost looks semi-transparent as well. Hmm. Maybe I'm just saying it wrong, but... Yeah, from their <laughs> point of view, they think they're fighting Maleficent, but it's just... They just immediately wiped out by Baldur's Darkness. Right. Okay, so yeah, we learned that, and I guess Hoda's heart comes along for the ride within within Xehanort. Um, and then they turn around and... And, uh, yeah, start heading back. And at that point, Baldur and uh, Brad Guy have already had their little fight. And I guess... Yep. Yeah, I guess there was some confusion there. Like, does Boulder, does Braggai again fake his death at this point? And so Boulder thinks he's taken him already? Or do they just sort of make an agreement of like, yeah, okay, um, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to interfere. I'm just going to leave. Like, He must like, because that looked like a pretty devastating hit. The one where so he like slams like, him down into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this didn't happen, right? But yeah, I mean, if you look at the last scene they're in, like you do see Balder like, pro- like, you know, going to attack him. So, like, I think that fight definitely plays out. Um, and this is kind of what I wanted to bring up earlier. Um, and we're, like, we're almost there, so I don't really want to talk about it still. But, like, I'm wondering almost if he can sense, like, the light or their hearts or something. So, like, once he's, like, killed them, he's like, all right, cool. I can move on now. Right. Because I always wonder what happens to the bodies that, that Lushu's, like, 
hopping around in, right? Right. So I'm almost wondering if like they are just passengers for a while until he like hops to the next body. But in this case, like Brag Eye actually was killed, like his heart was destroyed in that attack. And so, you know, when he moves on, Brag Eye just ceases to exist. Cause that kind of would make sense with the whole like because right, my whole thinking is I don't really because we still need to get to the end. <laughs> um but like yeah, if, if Balder's going through this entire plan to kill 13 lights and he doesn't kill Brag Eye, mm. then that's he's going to kill Xanor, right? And then the door's not going to open because he's only killed 12 lights, right? Unless Balder himself does, is a corrupted light. Like in Balder himself counts as one of the 13. But he doesn't say that, right? He says Xehanort's lucky number 13. He, he does, yeah, he does. From his point of view, yeah. Well, right. but, unless he's, again, unless he's already counting himself. Unless he's already counted himself. Yeah. But he's killing them. He's not turning them. Well, he just says turn the light to shadow, right? Which I guess both could, <laughs> it could still yeah. maybe be true. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I got, yeah, I'd have to go back and see. Because I feel like he counts them, but I guess we we don't see what we seem to start counting at like at eight, don't we? Yeah, we don't know when yeah. it actually. Because at that point, it's let me see if I can find it. But yeah, I I, th- I think he starts counting at number eight. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it seems weird. Either like the darkness is keeping it from Balder that he's going to be the last vessel, or like he didn't kill Brag Guy, so like if he kills Xehanort, it's not gonna open the portal. But yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure or the door, the summon kingdom hearts or whatever. Yeah, I I mean I gotta who knows the method this time around. I guess Okay, sorry, no no. So he points at uh Vor and says you'll make A. And at that point he's already counting Hoda as number one, I suppose. And then Hoda, Heimdall, Helgi, Sigrun, so that's two, three, four. Bragai, Erd, and Hermod, five, six, seven. So that's who he's counting so far. So he's not counting himself among among. So others. he is counting Bragai. Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, unless he's deliberately lying to Vor. But from his point of yeah, view, which... like he he's replaying it back in his mind. And that's when we see the scene of Bragai being slammed down to the ground. Right. So I guess in his mind he would be doing it, but he never like completes it. So, but I do like what you said. Like if Bragai is smart, well, I guess Lucia with this point is smart enough to like I guess release Bragai's actual heart from that vessel and make Balder think that oh okay yeah there goes a heart I guess I killed him. Except right, you know Lucia is then able to I don't know reconstitute the body or I don't know. It's just funny the map that, that takes place on. I don't think I recognize that map from Union Cross. I don't mm-hmm. think we see that in the rest of in the rest of Dark Road at all. It's... I don't think so. Well, we see it when we fight um, Cerberus, right? It's just on that lower path. Is it the same map? I thought that was a different one. Let me. Well, we have him, don't we? Let me see if I can try and find that while um while we're talking. But I th- right, yeah. thought this was a different one where it's got that like it's got like the three tiered area to it. And it's the one, the one we walk through in Shirithi, in well, in Union Cross, and Shirithi warns us about yeah. like going down the dark path. I, th- I think it's a different map from. I think you're right, actually. So they just, they just fight, and I guess they would, right? They they just move around the underworld. Yeah, so they must have been having this huge brawl. Okay. Maybe I'm yeah. wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it happens at the same place, but because I think we do fight Cerberus on this map in Union Cross, but it's not like. Because where we fight him in Dark Road is... Well, I think... think yeah, where, it's like, the one where, where you the, can go up and down, right? Like, there's, like, little cubby holes you can drop down into? Yes, I think so. And that's a different... Than the, the, the three-tiered one you're talking about, right? I believe so. Yeah. Huh. Well, so does Brat Guy's heart release when that, like, no. punch comes down? No. Okay, right. It fades away. I didn't away. think so. Ball just shapes himself. Brat Guy fades then, away? Uh, sorry, no, no. Um, we we don't see him fade away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We see the three upperclassmen; their bodies fade away. We don't see Bragai fade away. We just see him like suffering on the ground. Then the next thing we see is Omod and Erd fading away. Yep. So again, that's but we don't see the original. The, 
the sister doesn't disappear, right? The sister. Or no. She disappears, but her heart doesn't float up. We see her like only just beginning to disappear and like Bob okay. himself like freaks out as the darkness stands next to him. So, okay, then that, it doesn't really make sense then, right? Because well, she's, he... she's still fading away when, when the, when the three of the classmates run in. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess. But I'm saying Brad guy not disappearing would be a clue to Balder that he didn't finish the job, right? It, yeah, it's still up in the air. Like, did... Or is he just lying? Again, because, like, he's acting all high and mighty and powerful and stuff, right? Like, yeah. is it just better from his point of view to just lie and be like, yeah, I killed I killed Braggai as well? Or does he actually not know? Or does it even matter? Like, does it does it functionally... Well, that was the other thing I was thinking about, <sighs> yes, is that, like, he slaughtered all these children. Yeah. Wouldn't those constitute lights as well? Like... Why are they specifically the upper and lower classmen of this class? Yeah, I mean, maybe you don't get a Keyblade until you're like a lower class, but maybe that's the first time you get a Keyblade and no one else has even reached that stage. Right. So you have the, you have the seven upper, the seven or, lower. Or... Mm-hmm. Right. I was going to say maybe too, maybe he has to have like a connection to them. Balder does. Yeah. Like maybe he has to have a connection for like the, I don't know. For something to occur mm, maybe. and he's connected to like the upper classmates through his sister and then he's part of the the lower classmates hmm. and it kind of feels like everything's siloed off like you don't really see them interacting with any other classmates no i mean that could be due to budgetary reasons i'm but... sure yeah <laughs> but <laughs> oh man yeah I, I, I don't know it, i don't know it's interesting like if dark road was if there's an infinite budget, infinite time, like what the story might look mm-hmm. like. Um, yeah. Cause I know he did mention that he wanted to go more into the stories of the other classmates, but it's like, we, I think they talk like six lines all together or something like, <laughs> it's not much. or the, the ones that die early. Yeah. 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 They speak more when they're dead than they do when they're alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, at this point, we basically learn, we've we've heard from them, and then we start, yeah, we basically go and try and work our way back up to Hades, um, who comes to basically claim what he's owed. Well, I guess somebody doesn't, because from his point of view, he's already got one, right? And then we, mm-hmm. Zayn and Ericus are all pissy about that. They're like, no, we're taking all our friends back. At that point, none of the lower classmen have died, right? Because Braggai's still okay. But is he? Because I guess Hades is like, someone's died. And we know it's the obviously yeah, that's it's not I'm, right? Like he says someone's died. So it has to be. So yeah, he does, has does killed... Brag Guy, actual Brag Guy, Brag Guy die? And Lu Shu's. Yeah, still... which would give us a clue into how Lu Shu takes over bodies, which is pretty cool. Okay. Right? I'm yeah, I'm kinda of on board with that. Cause right, I do distinctly remember saying like Hades is like, all right, we have one, and then I feel like one of the other classmates is like, you have two, like two or two are dead. And then Hades is like two. Like what? What are you talking about? I could be off my <laughs> off my chain, but I feel like he does say something <laughs> like that. That said, I do know where one of them is here as a new permanent resident of the underworld. Um, and then what do you mean? Did Brag or Bald or Balder disappear? And of course, Hades doesn't know the difference. Like I can tell who's who. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, it's like no. Um, I don't. Yeah, and then Earth's like, no, we, we're not living without our friends. Right, but hey, you knew the right. terms. One lives here now permanently. Yeah, so someone, someone, and I can always make room for the other one. Yeah, someone's dead, and the other one, I guess, isn't present currently. So it has to be Brad Guy. So then, yeah, I mean, I can't think of who else he'd be talking about. I guess it's definitely, definitely we're all not four there. Yeah, and then the rest of us are all here. Yeah. So it has to be, okay, interesting. Which again would tie into would know. why why Boulder thinks that he's already yeah. corrupted Bragg. Okay, so what that's that's the logic then is that potentially Braggai has sorry, Lushu has released Braggai's heart and that's enough to trick Boulder into thinking that well, Yeah. I don't know if he willingly did it. Because right, like that massive attack could have killed Braggai but not Lushu. Maybe. 
I don't know if that I don't even know if that logistically works. Yeah, and then you know what? Forget it. That's true permanent residence of the underworld. So I, maybe that's what you were thinking of. I, yeah. So what is that? I don't know if at that point oh, he was just saying, say, "I'm going to claim. I'm going to take another one of you." you, have, you taking a, oh, okay. That's what I was thinking about. I just got to that part as well. Right. So he was going to say, "All right, that's another one." But what he's saying is, "All right, we have Bragg guy. You're being annoying, so I'm going to take another one of you." Right. As opposed to we have Bragg guy and Balder. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Yeah, I think that's what's happening, yeah. But yeah, they really don't make that super clear, do they? Mm. But it's so interesting. I don't I don't know if it's meant to be a callback to Union Cross or not, but a portal now a dark portal opening up and eating up the four lights. It's such oh, a like that's reverse totally, callback yeah. to Union Cross where, you know, a light portal opens up and sucks in the four darknesses. That Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's that no, that's totally what that is. That's cool. It's even, it's even shot from the left hand side as well. Like I don't know. Like yeah, yeah. And Hades all looks super confused. They're all sucked in. I guess they didn't, because the the line here is like oh, all that angst for nothing. I would have thought they would have made it more obvious that it wasn't him that did it. But I guess in hindsight, it is super obvious. But right when you watch it again, it's like what? oh yeah. I guess yeah. Does he think they opened a portal and escaped or what? And now he's like, oh no, it's someone else that did it. It's Balder that did it. <sighs> yeah, I don't I don't think he realizes until he turns around again, because I think he thinks they just got sucked in by somebody else. And then he like cools off and then he turns around and then he's like, What? Yeah. Yeah. And then they're in the darkness. And God, it's just horrible. Like the way that the two are like limping t- together and they're like, No, it's too late. Oh, this darkness yeah. in my heart. That's that's gonna be the worst death. Just like knowing that you're doomed. And then they have that like faint glimmer of hope. Like, oh no, we actually might be okay. Oh, mm-hmm. nope. We're, we are. <laughs> it's, I think that's, yeah. It's so what's tragic is, right? They would have recognized. You see, like. Um, their friend. Was it Erd? Erd, she smiles for like a second. Erd like readies up though. And then she does, yeah. But for just that one instant, she smiles. Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah, she smiles and then she's like, oh. Shit. And it's like, oh god, it's so horrible. Like, yeah, because you're like, you're, you're trying to keep light alive. Like, she's like, no, no, don't worry, help's coming, help's coming. And like, Umar doesn't believe her. He's like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, okay. But then she's like, oh, oh my god, that's right, yeah. there is help here. And it's like, yeah, it's a video game, it's fine. Yeah, we're the protagonists, we're the heroes. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that they're yeah, like subverting all these expectations of like, and I guess you kind of expect it, right? When you're going into this, you're like, you know, they can't all survive. Yeah, well, you, but just the way they do it is so tragic. Yeah, it's it's awful. It's too late. Darkness is in my heart. Yeah. I don't know. It's freaking Keyblade <laughs> armor as well. Like, do you reckon it's intentionally shitty? <laughs> like, like it's freaking Keyblade armor and it can't survive, you know, corridors of darkness, but freaking fabric can. Well, right. Well, Keyblade armor would have been created after right the the <clears throat> oh I, I, I guess i see what you're saying the keyblade armor came from the master of masters so inadvertent like he is already setting up the expectation that nothing can protect you from the darkness whereas he's created the or maybe he didn't create them but kind of sounds like he created the, the dark coats to actually prevent darkness yeah because he refers to it as being like a newer model right but it's actually not right I mean, the Master of Masters has been wearing this coat since effectively the very earliest <laughs> chronological point in the entire series. Yeah. So. Okay, and I've heard this. I know everybody, uh, like, I, I don't like this theory either, but, like, how Sora is, like, the Master of Masters. I hate it, but yeah, go on. Yeah, no, I, I don't like it either. Um, but if we are taking it into, like, maybe maybe they are from the future. Like, the Master of Masters is from the future, so, like, Keyblade Armor... Nah, because if he created Keyblade armor, then he went into the future, and then nah, never mind. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna follow that path. Um, oh god. All right, well, yeah. So Erd see someone that could potentially help him. Oh no. Now they're dead. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so you know, and Ericus looked to suffer basically the same fate, but who should arrive? But you know, well, a darkness first, but yeah. But, I didn't realize I didn't see that on my first playthrough. I noticed it, but only because I think the trailer showed it off. 
um, ah. that there was a darkness there. But yeah, then here comes bloody Odin strutting along with his, you know, <laughs> ball of light that's enough to protect. Yeah, well, wouldn't he teach that to the students as opposed to having them just go in their armor? I guess maybe you need to have a lot of strength or something. He's just able to find him in this corridor of darkness, you know, too late to help out the other two, but he's able to find these two guys. Yeah. Do they have, I don't know, do you reckon they have like a Rikus and Sigil on them or something? Like he's <laughs> able to track them down? Um. I mean, Erika's armor should have it, right? Like, isn't he... Um, Armor of the Master. I feel like it has that... Does it have an X on it? Armor of the Master. Well, Xehanor has the Nobody Sigil on him. Right, which is still strange to me, but... Which we don't know what that means. Like, that was... He didn't create that. Uh, not that I can see. I don't think it has an X on it. I'm just looking mm -hmm. up the Birth by Slate version of the Armor of the Master, but... Right, so... Right, because now both... Odin and the Master Masters have just stumbled upon young Xehanort right. just walking. So that does kind of beg the question of and they both seem how to be did they find them? Him. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess and the, yeah, Odin would be looking for him. The Master of Masters, I guess, could have been looking for him. I think the Master Seems definitely kinda... was. 100%. He's just like, whoops, I stumbled across you, but I think he was 1 trillion percent looking for him. Okay. Because then he's like, I'm just mm. going to keep waiting here until you're done. Like, he's, <laughs> he's there to set Zayana on his path, one million percent. Yeah. Um, all right, but so, yeah, chronologically it jumps all over the place, but yeah. Um, basically, yeah, Odin saves them and then brings them back to the classroom. Um, And then, yeah, Odin's like, we've lost just ridiculous amounts. And then I think... I think that's when he, they mention Boulder. And Odin does seem genuinely surprised by that, which... Uh, I still am so suspicious of this guy, like... I I don't think... Yeah, I think we disagree on how suspicious he is. Which I, I can see... <sighs> So it begins. Yeah, I can see him being suspicious. He, like definitely, he's he's waiting for this. So it begins. He he knew this was coming, but knowing it's gonna come and planning it, I feel like are different. Because right, like he seems to have a lot of knowledge on a lot of different things, like the past and the future. Yeah. So it makes me like he's probably read the Book of Prophecies or at least bits of it. Yeah. Well, I feel like he, because he's able to summon the master defender and right the um whatever the keyblades call it unknown or whatever no no name. no name yeah um so like i don't know he, he has some knowledge but i don't think he's like a bad dude well hold on do you remember the it's like a birth by sleep scene mm -hmm. and Ericus is talking into like the mirror with the other two masters. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, behind the de behind the chair. Is that confirmed to be Xehanort and Yen Sid? Oh yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, because I was thinking it could be it would be Odin and Yen Sid or Odin and Master Xehanort. Oh, I think it, I think Yen Sid is definitely one of them. I think Yen Sid's but, one of them. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, like if Odin's already an old man at this point and based off the lifespan of our of our key kid, I don't think they're gonna probably live. dead. He's maybe? probably already dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I know there was a theory floating around that he, uh, Odin becomes Yen Sid dude, or something like that. I really I don't hate that. think that <laughs> <laughs> I it doesn't follow for me. Not at all. I don't yeah. The only thing I can think is the I need to go off to some distant land, right? Because he's going like, to like retire into a quiet isolated. world or something, right? What, what did they say? Yeah. I almost um, like the idea that, that he becomes the owner of the old mansion better in Twilight Town. Like, Twilight Town's a pretty peaceful world. Or it could just be nothing. Oh, or he could yeah. just rack off and, I mean, and go nowhere. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it, I don't think it's nothing. I think he'll definitely... Like, I know loves little leave the hook and pick it but up that's later the thing. kind of he, thing. He could be nothing right now and 
you know, in Kingdom Hearts 85, it could be like, oh, wait, hang on, wait. <laughs> I've, left this, yeah. I've left this little hook dangling for myself. Let me go grab that. Which I think is really good writing for me. I feel like it's better to leave things undisclosed. Yeah. And leave a, like a little hook for you to come back and, and fit into the story. I mean, we're talking about it, to... to... Like, isn't it more interesting that we're having a yeah. conversation about like what it could mean? And then right. it could mean nothing. Again, it could mean absolutely exactly. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually it's like, oh, I could use this. Yeah, right. like these playful little things you can just leave dangling there and pick them up whenever he wants. I, I, I love it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Oh, man. So just hang on real quick. So <laughs> much earlier on, Odin sends us all off, right? Mm-hmm. And then he kind of says to himself, like the Seeker of Darkness will soon be upon us. Let's say. Where does he say that? So this is... And mind you, made the right decision. It's in the classroom, you're not right? To handle. Yeah. So I think he says you're relieved of your duty or something. It is in my hands now. As of this moment, you are relieved from your duty. Yeah. And so they're all sad about it. They all walk off. The Dark Seeker will finally be upon us. So how do you Dark read Seeker. that? Do you read it as like, oh shit, this is a prophesized thing that's like finally coming? Or is he happy about it? This or oh, the Dark Seeker ah. will finally be upon us. I don't think it's that. that I guess that's yeah. I think that's what I was thinking about when everything. I said that he knows about the future. Yeah, like that and like the whole. Um, there's something else, but basically, yeah, right. The fact that he says that is like, oh, he knows the future. Like that, I feel, I feel like at least well, it's pretty. Like that seems like yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, pretty confirmed from in my opinion. Think he... <laughs> but I think he thinks Balder is the seeker of darkness. I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Which is which is so funny to me, right? Like, and I love this. I, I think this is one of the things I like about Kingdom Hearts is that the characters in the story they only know what they know, right? Yes. Yeah. And they only apply logic to things that they're aware of. 100%. So like, right? Like, Child of Destiny. Our players like, all right, this guy has empathy. He can link with other people's hearts. Yeah. This has to be the Child of Destiny. Yeah. And it's like, nope but you tried and then you you know you created this not monster but like you know someone that is so dedicated to thinking out there and i think you we you brought this up um someone that's so dedicated to the, to the idea that they're the child of destiny that they just keep going and going trying to prove themselves until like they're way too far past the you know the point of no return where they have to kind of commit and do the deed like but at that point they're like i mean every single step on their path must be if i am this destined right. child then the I am everything I do is in accordance with this thing anyway. So no matter how extreme I get, there are st- steps that I be must take because this is what I have yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I was saying That's so fascinating. I think I was yeah. saying to Bio, like, I really think Dark Road is gonna be like recommended watching before you play Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm getting to the point now where like it's only the Lushu thing that makes I me think- hesitate. <sighs> I think you get I so yeah, I much after, more right? out of three if you have watched this though. It's, it's so tough. It's like, what's your... <sighs> I think... No, I think... I think for me personally, right? And I guess this is for me, like, you know, experiencing the Kingdom Hearts games pretty much in release order. Yeah. But it's like, I feel like, right, you're you're going through all King, Kingdom Hearts 3. And we kind of touched on this at the beginning. But it's like, you get to the end of page 3. You're like, finally beat the bad guy. And like, we're getting rid of the, the guy that's like the most evil person. And he's like, I did my best. Like, I tried to be the good guy. And it's like, What? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then you play Dark Road and then you're like, wow, this gives so much more context to the story. Like, I think for me, I like experiencing the story that way where it's like, I, I had this notion, I had, had this idea and then it gets reversed at the last second. And I'm like, but that doesn't make any sense. And then like months later, I, I get into Dark Road or I like, I fi- you know, they finish Dark Road and it's like, oh, wow, that makes that makes the story way more layered and deep. But like, I don't know. I, do you I think feel like that? In, so this is, I was actually going to talk about this as an entire own podcast topic, but whatever, it came up naturally, so I'm glad. For me, <laughs> I think I'd rather, in, if I could have complete hindsight here, have mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts 3 be like, it's this ultimate crescendo, right? And I'd, I'd want that experience to be the best it could possibly be. Because I remember, I remember leaving Kingdom Hearts 3 feeling not great about the whole Xehanort thing. Like, I was really not super thrilled about it. And it... Yep. it I don't know if cheapened the entire saga is the right word because he's the, he's the central antagonist, right? If mm-hmm. if his motive, if Zaynor's motivations have changed in my eyes, then it almost changes the entire series up to that point. It's like, oh, he was actually trying to be, from his point of view, good the entire time. 
So, right. we were stopping a guy that thought he was doing the right... I don't know. I mean, it's tough, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, also, yeah. also uh, um, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's great. If if you see Dark Road first and you know that classmates can die, like, now it's a huge risk. Like, oh, shit, they are killing people off. Mm-hmm. Do you then go into Kingdom Hearts 3 with like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Like, people aren't safe. I don't know. I, I play 3 feeling so safe. Like, I never for a second thought anyone was going to die. I was completely fine. Right. Like, if you see Kari getting bipped, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> no. They actually got her? Yeah. Like, and then, you know, she's okay later on, but like. Well, I kind of felt like that. But I didn't think, I, I don't right. know. I didn't think she was dead. I was like, yeah, there's going to be some shit. We've already rewound time. Oh, right. Like, <laughs> but they kind of set that up as well in the story. You know, like, you know, when you die, you're not dead kind of thing. Like your body and heart have to expire at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, don't I like, get what you're saying, though. The way that- right? The stakes are raised by just witnessing even Union Cross, right? Like your own player dies. Right. So it's like the stakes are just brought. Like you're, the main character is just dead. <laughs> yeah. But I, Which I, I guess kind of happens in Cage 3 as well. The way, kind of. The way that 3 played out, it was like. I don't know, because like 3 days opening <laughs> movie, the playing points, all this stuff that's always like, Sora's going to save us, Sora's going to save us, Sora's going to save us. Like. I, right. I never got any inkling that I was like, yeah, they're setting it all up. We're gonna we're gonna save everyone. And it's gonna be fine. We're basically gonna like, you know, King Lots Three is going to not reverse, but pay off to all these tragedies that have happened to all these kids so far. Like Vent Terra Arc, right. they're gonna be fine. Like everyone's gonna be happy, everyone's gonna be okay. Like the only person that I guess Eric has like finally, quote unquote, like actually died. He just staved off his death <laughs> for like 10, 20 years. Yeah, ten years. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think for me, it wasn't about the story itself. Like, I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like Kino Hearts Three had a really solid story, and I know that's really controversial to say, but I think it's more because the trailers leading up to it, and I think Dark Road even. Like, I try to stay away from the like screenshots of Dark Road, yeah. but like. They're, they're, and maybe it's just a different culture, right? Because like they all, they, I think every scene that we saw in Dark Road was also like shown over the past few months. Like I don't think there was really anything that we didn't see, as opposed to you know the big twist, obviously. Um, and kind of the same thing for Kingdom Hearts three. Like we saw like every world before, and we saw all the you know organization members and stuff associated, and like. I think it kind of, and, and even like the whole, you know, Sora losing all his friends. Like we saw all those scenes in three before we experienced it in the game. And I think that mm. really detracted from it. So I, I would argue that. Yeah, I, I think I still stand by my argument of like Kingdom Hearts 3. You're, you're, you know, you get into this big climax of like, finally, I'm defeating the bad guy. I know he's a bad guy. And then he's like, I did this for the good of the world. And it's like, what? That. That's not no. You're the you're the bad like I know you're the bad guy, hmm. and then it's like ah now I'm now I'm getting into his backstory and wow this is much more complex than I thought. But I guess too right, I can see how that could cheapen the experience of like you know you defeat the bad guy and then it's like oh I'm not the bad guy and it's like what, that's dumb. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean it's like from his from our point of view he's still the bad guy. His 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 methods of I'm going to purge all darkness from this world. By summoning Kingdom Hearts, no matter what the cost is, I'm going to summon Kingdom Hearts. I'm going to do it. Gosh darn it! I'm going to reset everything back to but, blank. That's still bad yeah. from our point of view because obviously we think, hey, no, 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 you know, we can, we're fine with things how they are. It's okay. But doesn't Sora say something like, you know, Xehanort would like, he was saying, you know, someone has to take up and de- make the decision Stand for that world. Lead. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, who's gonna? Do, why? Like, I should be the one to do it. And Sora's like, then who else no. was it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like not you, right? So it's still like I don't know. I feel like Sora is kind of saying I could make the decision, but it, it won't be you to make the decision. I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess you could also say that he's saying no one has the right to make that decision. I think that's what that's Sora's <laughs> philosophy, yeah, is that it it's yeah. too big of a decision for any one person to make. But saying again, if if he is 
colored by this idea of, no, I'm the child of destiny. I'm the one that's going to save the world from darkness. Mm -hmm. It has to be me that does this. Then he would have that, I don't know if inflated ego is the right word, but he would have that sense of responsibility on him. Like, no, no, yeah. I am the one that has to make this a good <clears throat> choice. Like, I don't know. If we're going to go back to like, yeah. fan, like you know, Marvel tie-ins, like <laughs> I'm the, <Right. laughs> the bird of Mexico falls upon me. I have to do this. Right. Snap. Which I love. Like, I think that's such a cool, like, con like it. Yeah. It's not just an end. It's, it's not just the bad guy. Cause he's the bad guy. Like he actually has, you know, like he's trying to do what he thinks is right. I think, you know, in dark road, I think makes Zane would have a much, 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 much more rewarding story. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally <laughs> writing a video right now. of like, yeah, King, Heart, go back and rewatch Kingdom Hearts 3's ending after you've played yeah. dark road. Cause you will get infinitely more out of it. Like it, and yeah, I, th it might be controversial, but I really, I literally, apart from the Lushu thing, I would so strongly recommend watching this first. Because I think for me, Kingdom Hearts 3 is in, in so many ways, it is the wrap up to his entire saga, right? It is, I mean, people read it wrong, I guess, or misinterpreted, but a lot of people thought this was going to be the final finale of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. They obviously weren't paying attention, but. I guess, look, I mean, fair enough. Well, if you're, if you're not a dingus to, that doesn't yeah. pay attention to this series constantly and you're not watching the mobile games constantly, you, maybe you don't see it. Well, yeah. I would argue that if you if you bought 2.8, right, you saw back cover, that sets up ooh, so much story that doesn't even tie into anything with Kingdom Hearts. Right. Or like this established Kingdom Hearts. And it's like, but, I mean, if you saw that, I, I feel like you don't get that card of like Kingdom Hearts 3 is the end. Because <laughs> it's like... Hold on. <laughs> Who are these guys? What's, and, what's this random guy? Right. Yeah. That didn't so, show up at all during during three. But I get I but I mean, you know, a lot of the media, I think around that time, <sighs> like news articles and stuff was like, you know, you know, the lead up to the the big final clash. And like that makes sense. Like if you know, if you're a game journalist, right, you have so much time invested into just covering every game that you don't really get into the lore. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, the big fight against Anort. Must, be, must the be the end, yeah. Right, it's gonna be. <laughs> Which fair enough. I get. I, I can't really call someone out for doing their job. <laughs> but I mean, even. I mean, it's undeniably like I don't think anyone would say Dark Road is a better like game than Kingdom Hearts Story. I feel oh, like, no. and they're totally different games. Like you can't you can't really. Compare I feel that them, in I feel a lot like... of ways it's apples and oranges, right? But yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, it's still it's still a game within the same series, and I feel like, yeah. For me, I'd rather have three, no matter how you feel about it, if it's, you know, a finale or not to the entire series. Mm -hmm. I feel like that should be the best experience it can possibly be. And for me, I, I know the the rug was definitely, like, I didn't enjoy that the rug was pulled out. I wasn't like, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> I was like, that's yeah. horseshit. You're just trying to give him a cool backstory right at the end here that you don't flesh up now. We, you know, it's now September of 2022. And that game came out in January of what, 2019? Jesus. So, wow, yeah. that's so long ago. <laughs> Having to wait three and a half, what, almost four years now for that. Oh, I think additional context for his story. I, it doesn't help, you know, 2019 me at the time who was like kind of shitty about it. <laughs> and I think a lot of reviews yeah. would say the same thing. I know a lot of casual fans. It's so funny. I talked to some guy at a bar the other night. He was like, a friend introduced me. He was like, oh, this guy makes Kingdom Hearts videos. And this guy was like, Oh, really? I hated three. Like it felt like such a bad ending to me. It's like, <laughs> really interesting. Um, but I think that's the sentiment. But yeah, without the context, a lot of people felt. I think that. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess. I like my expectations being subverted because I don't like being able to predict something. So like, I feel like that was like a breath of fresh. Air. Like I didn't know what was happening. Like my expectations of beating the battle, and I've said this probably three times in this podcast alone. Just like the expectation of beating the bad guy. And he turns out to be not the bad guy. It's like, I loved it. I was like, well, not, I mean, right. He's still the bad guy. But it was like that question in the back of my head that was like, that didn't make sense. Right. Why, why are they trying to make this like, like humanize him almost? Mm. And then, yeah, it's just like, I, yeah. The only thing I would say against watching Dark Road first is, yeah, like the, the whole Lushu reveal. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't think they call him they Lushu, didn't, They right? didn't say the word Lushu, yeah. So, if you, if you so honestly, stayed off the it internet might even be... and you just yeah. consume the content, you're like, all right, I've watched Dark Road. All right, I'm on to the next one. Like, And you finish Dark Road and then you go into, I guess, 3 at that point. Or I think... 0.2 yeah. and then 3. 
And you're like, I actually, I think you're right. I think, I think you're, you're right. Like, what right? the fuck is that about? You'd see. And then you get the, oh my God. And then you double, oh my God. Wait, yeah. what? No, because, right? Because you'll, you'll see the part where Brag Eye is like, as if. And you're like, wait, hold on. But that won't mean it. That's Zigbar. That won't mean anything right? to you at that point. Because, like, if you're going through the first time, how many times does Zigbar say as if over the entire series? He says that all the time, doesn't he? It's a few times, but it's not like, especially without a voice, like you only hear just brag guys just say the word as if. Like, unless you already know what you're looking for, that won't stand out. I don't know. I feel like that's pretty... Okay, I guess, right. I, I had to come at this with like two years experience. Right. Like not I'm thinking it's like knowing brand, all brand new fresh lore. Kingdom Hearts eyes and there is so much information hitting you at a rate of knots and you're just like... Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Like... Oh, dude, I really think you should... I don't know. There's people that yeah, I've been watching I, I on, on Twitch that. that are going through the series for the first time and they're like halfway through Birth by Sleep. I'm going to like try and say, hey, you're going to be my grand experiment. You should watch Dark Road first. Because, <laughs> <laughs> right, it would give you that backstory. The only thing that's right, like I think I like the twist at the end where it's like, you know, I tried to do the right thing. I think that would be my only take, like my only like. I just Because right at that point, now you have this, con- right. I think that's what I think that's what's bothering me is right. You're playing a Sora. So you're on the protagonist side essentially the entire time. So if you switch to like get the backstory of the antagonist, then it kind of like. I don't know. I feel like that might be a bit confusing. But I think it I think it would. I think it would help the ending. For for, you know, people that, that didn't would like want it. that satisfying, like, you know, this makes sense. Like this isn't like a red herring or like. Is so random that they're making Xehanort seem like the good guy. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. Yeah, I I just think the overwhelming majority of people were more disappointed than like, oh, cool. It, no, it I agree with you. I don't that. think it felt satisfying at the time. And like, I, I'm just saying, rewatching it to get those cutscenes for that video the other day, I was like, damn, this is so much better. Damn, this is yeah. way better. And like, to, to end but on a see, satisfying note. Because... Right, right. But is it better because you had the dissatisfaction and then got the backstory and then came back? I will say, as someone that waited and couldn't sleep in like the weeks leading up to Kingdom Hearts <laughs> coming out, I would have rather been like, damn, that was sick, rather than like, oh. Okay, oh, fair enough. Shit. I guess that's okay. I guess he was doing the right thing the entire time. <laughs> but it was. it didn't feel yeah. earned. That, I guess that's what my main thing is. It didn't feel earned. And I feel right, like it did feel with shoehorned. Dark Road, it feels way more earned. Which, again, is funny because obviously it's come yeah. after the fact. But, like, the the yeah. building blocks... Yeah. I, w- I won't say it w- came out of completely nowhere. Like, the building blocks were there. But Dark Road is, like, the final block that puts... Now the entire bridge is complete. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this yeah. is this. The We really needed this. Like, the idea think, that... Because yeah. they seed everything, right? They seed, like, okay, we can purge the worlds. If we summon Kingdom Hearts, we'll purge the worlds. Like, it's, a, it's an extreme step, but it's one yeah. that has to be taken, like... Because Vidar is doing the same thing. He's just going down the, the route of light to do it. Like, Xehanort is ch- yeah. taking the dark route to the same destination. Um, yeah, actually, I was going to bring that up as well. Um, how, like, right? Sora is taking out all 13 darknesses by himself, right? Right. And that was like, why is he... You know, that's weird, right? Like, why is Sora the only one that can make, you know, turn the 13th darkness into, like, a keyblade? Um, which I know is not really clear but i think doesn't mickey and riku attack xehanort and then when sora does that's when the keyblade's created honestly that the whole thing was kind of weird i think uh, maybe it'll get explained later maybe i just misunderstood what it, what it is um but yeah i liked how they showed that sora was like attacking like the 13 darknesses and then it's showing balder attacking the 13 right. lights uh, yeah exactly i mean he's effectively still making his 13 keys right but he's doing it by corrupting lights Rather than yeah, rather than purifying like shadows, darkness, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Or oh yeah, uh, that's a good analogy. Because that's what happens, right? They all become complete humans again. Well, except for the the ones that time traveled to get here. But mm. you're gonna be recompleted. You're gonna be re- you're gonna be recompleted. <laughs> you're dying, but <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. You're in agony right now, but don't worry about it. Uh, Just chops you with this <laughs> blunt object. Um. <sighs> Yeah, we kind of got sight. I don't know. This I'm glad we talked about. It. I'm, I'm really glad we disagree. Actually, well, at least initially did. I mean, maybe we still do. But <laughs> I think I I think I'm still on board of like you know need to wait for that. 
I don't know. Yeah, I think I like the idea of your expectation being subverted and then coming back in with new context. I mean, you still see. Okay, I'm working. I'm still on it. I, <laughs> no, I, I feel fine. like you'd still I'm, be I'm... going into three, not knowing what exactly was going to happen. But mm -hmm. when he's like, "Okay, I'm going to purge the world," you're like, oh, "Okay, at least, at least I know what he's doing." I, I still right. really didn't. Because when he's talking about like, oh, the world's being corrupted, you know, polluting the world with our endless darkness. I, I, I read that and I'm like, you, you, you are responsible for it. What are you talking about? <laughs> you led Venetus around right. and he corrupted the worlds with his frigging darkness. Like, and we've seen you steal the light from princesses. Like, you are the guy. You are the one that is polluting the world with darkness. I, I feel like it didn't make any sense because I'm like, so far in this series, basically all we've seen is you. Like, the worlds were fine. And then you come along and start mm -hmm. making artificial heartless. You're the one that is doing all these awful things. Like, what do you mean the worlds have been corrupted, you know, <laughs> the weak are polluting it with their endless but he's, darkness? He's referring to people that, it? like, fall to darkness, I guess, like the Queen of Hearts and whatever. Yeah. But, again, we don't know that yet. Again, it, like, from, from right. where I'm talking, from where I'm coming from, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. When, when the game just... I guess three ripped me out of the ending when it was like this is really just his final speech like but if, if it had some if it had some context for it if it was backed up in some way i feel like you mm -hmm. didn't i know you would well i'm, I'm sure you would like if you were like okay <laughs> that's what he's talking about that makes sense you don't, you don't know what he's actually planning at that point you don't know if he's going to succeed in purging the worlds or not i guess well yeah I mean, it's it's weird being a Kingdom Hearts fan in 2022, right? Who is playing it for the first time. Like, you <laughs> somehow managed to dodge a million spoilers. Like, you've probably seen the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. Right. Just right. by osmosis. Like, you've seen those images of Sora looking all different. Maybe you think, yeah. okay, maybe you think, yeah, Zaynor will succeed. He's like, but oh, I, I guess. you don't really have the context. Sure, 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 sure. But I can see what you're but saying, like, yeah. this, you've you've gone on Twitter, you've gone on any website and seen those <laughs> shots of Sora looking different. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's impossible to avoid. Um, I mean, you, if you look at Kingdom Hearts three and Kingdom Hearts two, though, like that is a pretty. Big it could just people difference. would just be like, "Oh, it's just the new engine." Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I, I guess what I'm saying is, like, if you think, "Oh, maybe Sayonara is going to purge the world," so maybe that's why Sora looks different. If that's in the back of your mind, but this is now a pretty uh, logical leap here. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people are thinking about that. Yeah. But I mean, it could be. Um. Oof. What were we talking about? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now we got to the basically the basket <laughs> like our catch revealing his grand plan. Uh, again, it, yeah. it, I don't know. I'll probably like maybe I'll formulate a better argument for because I I literally am writing a video for like the but I wanted to wait to Dark Road first but I might like the ultimate or the recommended Kingdom Hearts ultimate. Watch order. Uh, and yeah. I yeah, really yeah. am like, yeah, Dark Road. You do Union Cross and Dark Road before you do three. Because I feel like three is <laughs> so much better. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. And again, I, I kind of want to do an experiment with these people that I've been watching on Twitch. <laughs> but like, Yeah. I mean, if they're keen to try it, some, why not? Do some reading. <clears throat> the, I mean, that's the other thing, right? It would be like, if you go Union Cross into Dark Road, it's like nine hours plus 10 hours of reading. It might be a bit much. I think. Unless, you know, unless I get my shit Wouldn't together. You, what? I was going to say, what? You could kind of just watch Union Cross. Inner, like, inner. Well, I can't think of the word, but like, just parts of it as you play the games. Because, like, you don't need to consume it all at once. For, yeah, no, it's true. For me, it's like, just, I mean, maybe I'm weird in this regard, but if I'm consuming a story. I don't want to be jumping off to like, okay, no, who are these characters again? All yeah, right, what were they doing? That's oh, Okay, that's this. I'd rather I just... lose track all the time. I, so I think like 2.8 is the perfect stopping point. Uh, sorry, pre-2, because that's when the engine changes, right? So like yeah. you finish yeah. you finish all of 2.5 and you're like, all right, well, let me go to YouTube real quick <laughs> and I just let me consume these oh, mobile games. before Dream Drop Distance? Well, sorry, no, I guess do 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 do, do, do oh, okay. no, Sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Um, yeah, do DDD first, and then because DDD in itself is already this weird, like the way it ends. The secret Rivian store is like, I got to go do something, and he takes off. 
<laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. then you cut to 2.8 and it's like, you've been gone for ages. Where the hell have you been? It's like that meta little joke of, you know, yeah, I've, we've been busy. Hey, it's, <laughs> we've changed yeah. engines. It's been quite a while. So, it's quite, I like it a lot. I think it's quite funny. I don't know. <laughs> it's like that for me, that's the perfect point to be like, all right, I'm going to consume all the mobile law. And now I'm going to go 0.2 mm-hmm. and now I'm going to go Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Melody Memory, blah, 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 blah. Like, but I don't know. I mean, who, who's to say what's perfect? I'm just saying like for optimal enjoyment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not like... I mean, honestly, I still would go with the release order. I think it's... I don't know. I, I just feel like... I don't know. I guess maybe not. I don't know. I guess I would have to think about it more. I, I think... You you make good arguments for the the dark road coming before it, but I think for personally, right? Mm. And obviously, all right, it's gonna be personal for everybody. But I think uh, for me, I just I just liked the the question of like what I did all I did all of this, and now you're telling me to feel bad for the guy or to think he was doing the right thing? Like that makes no sense. Of course, I'm not gonna but, believe that. And then I play Dark Road, and I'm like, holy heck, okay, maybe. But did you enjoy <laughs> that? Wrong. Did you enjoy that feeling though? Like at the time. I like it now. I think right, and so do I. Right, and I, so I do I. I like it for... now. At the time, I don't think I did. I I feel like I don't want people to walk away from three feeling like that was bad. I didn't. That was a bad game. Which, <laughs> unfortunately, a lot of people did. A lot of people really don't like three because they I don't know yeah. if they had expectations I... like crazy or what. But I think it was the popular thing to hate on Kingdom Hearts three. Honestly, yeah. Like, and that's just my <laughs> that's just my opinion on on people's psyche in general like the the popular thing is is the pre, uh prevailing feeling i feel like in a society but that still doesn't come from nowhere though like that feeling does spawn from probably some i mean maybe it's played up a bit for you know for entertainment value but that feeling is not born from nothing like i think a lot of people were unsatisfied with three yeah. which i think is justified yeah i think i think that's fair but like obviously we I we think... praise remind for a lot of the things it did right right like it it gave a lot of context <sighs> see i don't know i didn't it added I in this I, new combat abilities. It's fun as hell. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I'm like a hipster also. So like, <laughs> I don't like things that are popular. <laughs> I'm coming to realize that about myself. Will's well, been telling me that for a while. But I don't like Remind because everybody because everyone is doing it. Too much. it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just, I, and I think it's because people are like, yeah, it's way more challenging. You know, we get the, the hard bosses and like the, the sophisticated fights and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you just sound pretentious <laughs> like i don't know man <laughs> like I, and that's that's probably wrong of me to to just say that because like i think yeah i it's 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 not it's unbiased or unbased not based whatever <laughs> there's no there's no reason for me to have that that feeling towards the the dlc because other people enjoy it and I realize that, <laughs> but I still have that feeling. <laughs> do, you, do you personally find that you enjoy, I don't know, like the, the limit cut fights, the data fights, like to play them, um, to like to learn? I'm not. Okay. And, I, and this is also something maybe, you know, I, I think at this point in my life, I'm not like a avid gamer. <gasps> so the, I, yeah, no guess. <laughs> um, so the, the idea of just beating my head against the wall, like, cause right, I played it on proud, I think when I went through it. Yeah. And I didn't, I was like level 99, had ultimate weapon, had all this stuff, right? Yeah. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have the issue of it was hard. I would just, you know, f- play like I normally do. Or, you know, against Saiyax or Luke Sword, you had to like kind of figure out how to or when to attack them. Right. Um, but I think just the idea of like a challenge, right? I think it would just blast for me in the Kingdom Hearts community. But, I don't know. I, I, it's not something that I I think of when I think of Kingdom Hearts. I think of like the story and the lore. <clears throat> I guess. So in terms of lore and story for like Remind, I, I thought it was really cool. I liked that they brought back Data Sora. I like that they <laughs> yeah. expanded on Yozora. I, I, I'm an avid supporter of Recoded Man. <laughs> the more people hate on it, the more I'm like, dude, <laughs> no, this is a great game. This is good gameplay. Game- great story implications. Man. So good. I'm with, you, I'm with you on gameplay and like I'm half with you on story. But. <laughs> okay, no, okay. And this, I've made a whole video on this. So like, <laughs> data scapes are such an integral part. It's very like important. It, it, Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. So important. And like that wouldn't exist without. I mean, it would exist, right? But the 
the deep concept of it wouldn't exist without Recoded. Like, it's fleshed out in Recoded. It's very fleshed out, but I think this, we can do a whole discussion just on this. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know if it almost comes to, like, to the disservice of the actual play story the game. itself. The, I, I, no, I, I say that as someone who very much enjoyed playing the actual game. I did enjoy that. I think the, the gameplay is sick. I think the, co- key, like, customization. the movie doesn't do it justice. I think it does as best it can for what is oh, yeah, mostly a pretty yeah. dry story. But eh, I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, we'll put a pin in that. We that's, can, that's, we're gonna have a discussion. Yeah, we, can, we, right. gonna, we can discuss Time that in the, the RA credit story. <laughs> I like this. I like that we're having. I love that we disagree. Um, this is great. Yeah, this is terrific. Yeah. This is really good. Um. <laughs> Because, yeah, it's not like a... Yeah. We'll do a recoded watch party and we'll, we could pause it every five minutes and be like, this is good. And I'll be like, no, it's shit. Get on with it. Okay. <laughs> right, right. I don't think I... <laughs> I don't think the recoded movie is necessarily the way to it, to experience recoded. Because I think the gameplay... It, like, I think the gameplay is created to go hand in hand with the story. Like, I feel like it's a necessary component to enjoy the story. Hmm. The same way with Days, right? Like, the reason Days isn't as liked i feel like is because people try to play it all at once and it's like if you play the game as intended so like on your bus trip every day to work so you do a mission and you're getting that that tiny drip fed like like union cross i feel like it's way more like you connect more with the characters and you you build this rapport and like you build this kind of routine like roxas and Xion and axel do like all right they do the mission they get ice cream and you're doing that daily routine like doing your mission getting your ice cream like i don't know it's just this repetitive cycle and then it breaks and then something happens and it's like jarring and it's i don't know i, I think i Nomura loves to play with meta concepts and i think recoded and days are just really good and even kingdom hearts 2 right if you didn't play Re- rechain of memories or chain of memories and you i think you're the one that kind of pointed this out to me it's like you wake up as sora not knowing what's happening it's the best like, you are yeah. sora <laughs> beautiful kingdom hearts so. meta moments i love it um, and we can talk about this, but I don't know. I, I almost feel like, <laughs> like I get the concept. <laughs> I, like I saw someone in a chat the other day saying that like days was intentionally unfun because of those reasons that you just said. And it's like, I mean, obviously, no, I don't think they're unfun. I think, but if you play it all at once, like, no, that's not. You can't just binge. That's not how it was designed. That's, yeah, it's not designed that way. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still like a, a piece of entertainment, like a video game, right? Like, I don't know. I, I feel like your design concepts mm-hmm. and all that, like the, whatever you had on the whiteboard for like, okay, <clears throat> this is how it's going to be. It's going to meant to be emulate and simulate these feelings. But if it if mm-hmm. it comes at the cost of like fun, <laughs> I still feel like you've failed in the, your chosen medium as a video game. Like, should you be like... Right, but Namor doesn't care about that. <laughs> I feel like, at least to me, right? Like, I feel like he's <laughs> very like... <clears throat> expanding what medium like, like what game means kind of like like i feel like this might be controversial but i love hideo kojima's like take on what game is like the concept of a game and i feel like namor is like you know this is like you know a game but what if <laughs> like i don't know i feel like that's like i'm with you like i don't i don't hate days as yeah. a game i don't i mean I, and i quite again i quite like i, I don't coded, personally like, like it gameplay wise <laughs> yeah um I mean, it was fun to have just more Kingdom Hearts to play, but I, if someone's like, oh yeah, what's, you know, what's your favorite Kingdom Hearts game to actually play? I think <laughs> yeah. I, I will literally put probably Dark Road above. To, oh, I don't know. Maybe not that, but because I did enjoy like, <laughs> I don't know. I did enjoy I exploring, at least exploring the worlds and running around and stuff. Just combat was just a uh, worryful in days. <laughs> the battle tower was really fun. I loved that a lot. But I mean, it was um, also fundamentally you know. flawed. Hey, we're back on Dark Road, but it was fundamentally flawed in the idea that like they it wasn't you had to be, had to be awake on the right for you guys time. at least at like three a.m. in the yeah. morning if you wanted to have a chance. It's just it wasn't yeah. based on your actual in-game time. Like yeah, oh, it took you twenty-three minutes and fifty-two seconds. Try and beat it. It was were well, you were yeah. awake? Did you submit a score? I think at, at that time? point, right? No, I think at that point they kind of realized, ah, oh, yep, this is not the direction. Like we, you know, this isn't. It's not being planned. We're just pushing stuff out. Well, they tried to, We're like, trying to maintain that, that money and play elements into a game that was designed as a single player experience because that's what drives spending in gacha games, right? It's how do you yep. flex the things that you've bought in a single player game? You can't. I mean, there's no like in yeah. game leaderboard to show off how clever you are. So, whoops, now we have to like shoehorn in this multiplayer mode. 
and we'll do it completely right. wrong. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it. You know. So if the first person to wake up and do this wrong is the one that wins, because uh, yeah, because yeah. right, the idea is there. Make it a right? time the, trial. The competition Make it, okay, you can challenge each of these rounds, and you know, submit guess, your time, yeah. submit your best time, and maybe that's coming at like coming from like a developer standpoint, though, like with that time pressure and even management, right? Like they don't fully understand concepts they're wanting you to push out clearly so as a developer you have to interpret what they want and get it out in a very quick deadline so like i i think yeah i I wouldn't put too much blame on the developer or not the developers but like the the i don't know right i see what you're saying because you're not blaming the team or for whatever but it is essentially a flawed design choice to implement it that way the tower of trials 100 percent is yeah yeah it, it's, it's so close to being fine like using mm-hmm. your skills to try and defeat enemies as quickly as possible is it's what you write on the whiteboard right but then you implement that by going the first person to submit a time <laughs> right the first person to clear this thing is the winner so it's a race mm-hmm. where everyone starts a different unless unless you wake up people start 12 hours after the previous guy and even if they cleared it in half the <laughs> actual time doesn't matter they only they still well yeah i think they were on the ladder i feel like what it is actually i think it was okay actually i think this is what it is i think it was created with the correct intentions but i don't think they fixed i think they were unaware of the bug that you could time stop by hitting the the pause button seeing your cards and then doing your card combination and pausing again. Cause if you're not doing that, right, the enemy's constantly attacking you. You don't have that wait period to figure out your strategy. Okay. So without that time pause in the middle of it, I think not a lot of people would have gotten to the top of it, which would have been like, which would have pressured people to buy more cards, right? To get stronger. Um, so I feel like actually it was a good design. I just think people abused and exploited the games bugs in order to get around that time gate could you use were there were no revives in the tower right was that the idea uh yeah i don't think yeah there was no revives okay so what you're saying is that it was meant to be insanely difficult to the point where you couldn't actually beat it but immediately we all found a workaround which is i mean i i I sure as hell discovered it on my own immediately it's like well just pause and plan out your idea and then keep going Exactly, I'm pretty sure yeah. I made a video going, just do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, we all, Which, we all beat yeah. it pretty quickly. So I, so I feel like, yeah, I feel like they designed it to be like, hey, because it was a week-long thing, wasn't it? It wasn't a daily thing. You had a week to beat it from memory, yeah. It was once yeah. a month. So I'm had a sure it was it. like, you know, you have the first, I'm sure they thought, yeah, all right, we'll get uh, maybe five people that completed the first day. And then, you know, the rest will, you know, they'll get further and further and they'll be like, oh, crap, I got to get I got to get to the top. So I got to spend I'm, money I'm, I'm, to get I'm these cards now. I gotta, and improve. Yeah. Oops, weekly VIP resets. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but this weekly VIP reset the day before or something. And if I spend a little bit more, maybe I'll get. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you so, might be right. Honestly, yeah, I think I feel like it probably was a great design. And then just, yeah, they didn't account for the bug, which they could have fixed, I guess. But honestly, I don't know. Right. I don't know the system. I don't. I feel like they they were still handing it off to the developers that weren't part of their team. Um, so it could have been just a you know miscommunication as well, or not enough time. You know, like too much time already passed, they wouldn't be able to get the bug uh, put in before it went offline, kind of thing. I don't know. That's interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> I mean, I. But I honestly, yeah, I love Dark Road. I, it probably is probably one of the higher ranking games on my. <laughs> even if like for a mobile game i find that strange but i i don't know i I find it really fun i and we can do a whole again we can maybe stop now and do a whole podcast on it but i feel like it's just antithetical (laughs) to the entire story right like the the gameplay itself i mean i I say this i am literally grinding right now i'm trying to max out my character right like i'm not i clearly don't hate it um Mm -hmm. but the idea of like say not infinitely grinding against heartless as the core gameplay mechanic when the story itself is best based around we're not going to interfere Missions. with the world's order we're going to run in check oh. it out run out try not to stay overstay our welcome only fight when necessary <laughs> and flee otherwise like they even in the first mission they're like some of us you know do we flee or do we fight and Zaynot's well one of them's like flee and the other one's like fight it's like we're not 
no one's like we're going to go intentionally looking for hard battles <laughs> right i don't know i mean well i can see that argument for sure i still i still read the entire thing as like i don't know these like afk games are getting bigger they're trying desperately to figure out like you've got an in- dark road is already this in- sorry union cross is the install base already right it's an app already on their phones but it's it it's coming to an end it's a story driven game it's coming to an end how do we how do we keep it alive how do we just squeeze a little bit more money out of these people and this is what they came up with <laughs> no i yeah i definitely i i think it was definitely a money strategy um <clears throat> but i think they realized that and that's why they switched to the offline like no money currency involved because it was getting such a hard backlash which i think was a smart decision save face and just make a offline version i mean at least for the offline i mean I think they would have done the same with Union Cross because people always want the same for Union Cross, right? But it's so explicitly linked to being an online game. I was going to say, have to decouple. yeah. And you can probably tell me if I'm There's wrong. There's no way. <laughs> there are so many infinite things to decouple, right? Whereas Dark Road effectively only has, okay, launch the battle, like, you know, customize your deck, customize your character's name, level up his stats, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it's, and then choose which battle area you want to go into against a non random looping set of enemies. Like, <laughs> It's, it's um, infinitely less complicated than Union Cross, which has what a, almost a thousand stages, a thousand proud yeah. mode stages. You know the shop, the keyblade, you know multiple keyblades at this point, like all these things which you need to decouple from being. Is online. that all stored online? I think so. Yeah, everything everything's stored online. Oh, it's wow. like only a couple of like in-game preferences that are stored in your device, like what speed do you want the game to run at or whatever. Like this, but don't you download all the data? All the maps to your I'm I'm sure you download all the maps to your Right, but then the instructions of like which ones to actually load, they gotta they pretty sure they contact the server to do that. It's like okay, oh, okay. I am launching mission nine hundred and fifty three. So I need right. which assets do I need? And the game goes, These ones. And right. Still okay. like, yeah, you still yeah. have to like get those packets that tell you which ones to actually So you'd have to basically decouple yeah. all of that shit from being online. It's just It depends yeah, it kinda depends on how it was built, but looking then as little as it did oh. <laughs> that's so that's our, two hour that's long two hour oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um uh yeah I, I would say it depends on who how it was written right because if you had a function that was like retrieve you know server preferences or you know verify server integrity right you would just have that one pass through and so if you remove that or just fill it with a dummy call you can make it offline but if you write it as like each call makes its own separate, you know, verification. Like, hey, ping the server with this call or ping the server with this call. Then I can see how that can get really muddy really quickly. And it, I don't, the game kind of seemed very interestingly developed in the first place. So I, I wouldn't, I think it was very difficult for them to make any kind of changes. Um, I think one wrong change and it would take the server down essentially kind of how I felt. Um, like it was a very oddly, I guess because I think it was built so long ago that they just had such a legacy system that they were just adding new stuff onto. So like, I think it was really hard for them to upgrade the system, and which is why they kind of made a whole different game with Dark Road, and then just kind of bundled it with the app instead of right, you know, building off of what Union Cross was. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. uh, really, it's, it's I don't, I don't know the code base. But... So. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, but I could, it, yeah, it really all depends on, because right at, at my work, that code is really poorly, it's it's not condensed. So like, you know, we are making a lot of different calls in a lot of different places. So like making a change, you got to do it in like 12 other places. Right. But if you did it right, right, you'd only have change like a, a middleware one. that everything goes through. Right. Yeah, you just change one thing and it updates everything. So. Right. I can see Union Cross being the, you know, changed 1,200 things in 1,200 different places <laughs> and Dark Road being like, all right, just make it offline. You know, that should be easy enough, right? So the new game, a different base functionality, a whole different thing. So well, maybe we'll yeah. maybe we'll touch on that another time, but um, <laughs> I think that's a good place to call it. <laughs> yeah. Did we... Unless did you have anything <laughs> small you wanted to add at the end here? Uh, I was going to say, did we did we get through the i mean we didn't touch on like the secret ending or the the fast forward into yeah let's, stuff we should do that dark road <laughs> well let's, let's at least get through like the main story happening in in this current yeah time. 
and i just we're not and i'll try to piece our audio together in a in a format <laughs> <laughs> well there's not it'll be difficult. there's not a whole lot left right so basically just yeah boulder at that point reveals his kind of grand plan and confesses to everything and um mm-hmm. the yeah the upper classmates come along and i don't know it's just really interesting that ericus like attacks them and zane on basically says the same thing as like you're gonna fall just like bolted into darkness but i guess ericus is correct in saying that no no he won't like i'm pissed off but i'm not this is anger driving me right now not not darkness and but isn't doesn't darkness stem from emotions though? i thought so, so i yeah. can definitely see what zeno is saying right because isn't that was the whole thing with um the 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 queen of hearts right her anger or her wrath, jealousy yeah. or whatever wrath yeah drove the dark like that fed the darkness in her and they they asked her the question right it's like is it is it your heart that's doing this or is it the darkness like or is it where's the separation is there a separation yeah i really i that's why i love dark road so much it's like i love this question i just love the like you have a mechanic mm-hmm. in the universe and you call it darkness but then you yeah. explore <laughs> that and you're like okay is this what's actually driving you or is it are you still your own person like making your own you know do you have any free will still muddy the water there right i think so i feel like at the end we still don't know like was that was everything that was done was that really just darkness or was that balder embracing the darkness or i don't know like i i I feel like he and the darkness were basically inseparable at that point right it was still it was balder doing it he was corrupted by darkness but it was still him but at the end, like, right, if you strike me down, then Balder dies too. Like, is that darkness talking? Yes, it is. Yeah. So then which implies he's talking it... for Balder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever the darkness is, is definitely in control. There's that one point where he, like, makes that darkness all around Xehanort so we can have that chat with him. And that's what, yeah, that's shows what I was thinking about. And he he seems to be speaking honestly at that point. Like, he at this moment is, like, free of... And after Hoda appears, at least, he seems to be kind of free of that corruption just for a moment and can speak somewhat mm-hmm. honestly. But that still could be like he still is, you know, infected with the darkness, but he's just at least allowing himself yeah. to not be an evil bastard for five seconds. <laughs> you see, immediately then still turns his keyblade on her. Yeah. That scene where they're like holding the keyblades to each other's throats, I was like, oh, that's. Yeah, that's so cool. I, yeah, it was really great. It was really cool. They did, so, yeah, and I'm so glad that they took their time with the animations. 100. Even though Nomura was making weird comments about <laughs> that whole thing, but like they did such a good job, and I'm really glad they didn't rush it. Oh man, um, maybe we can touch on this more later because there are concepts of the darkness and stuff to talk about. But yeah, it's basically Odin finally steps in. We've fast forwarded a fair bit here. Even more keyblade wielders are being slaughtered, of course, because of course they have. <laughs> yeah. Any theories of Kari's grandmother being four get swiftly destroyed <laughs> yeah unfortunately i no. love four i do wonder if they kept her to last to maybe because i thought i guess she's gonna survive i guess she's gonna make it out of this nope there she goes I kinda, yeah because <laughs> i thought she i kind of was like okay she has to be important she's not dead yet she's separated you know she's at the end and the band no like she did <laughs> she's gone <laughs> zayn not cries for her i don't know like that's he doesn't cry for anyone else but tears run down his cheeks then I don't know. Oh, I like yeah. that. I wonder if that's like the, you know, he's been feeling that, but like now knowing that all of his classmates are now dead. Just he finally kinda. expresses it. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So Vidar, Vala, Vali get bipped, and then, yeah, Vor only a few seconds later. The gigantic ass, heartless thing that he spawns comes out. Which is so cool. I think Whale said that um, that enemy design is from like either 13 or 12 i think 12 i don't recognize it from 13 but i'll believe it's in 12 then yeah yeah but again i i haven't finished replaying 13 yet so maybe i'm wrong but um (laughs) um and then yes boldabeski reveals his plan so he thinks that yeah, so Vidar, again, was going to go through with summoning Kingdom Hearts, but he pulled out as well. He he eventually yeah. gave up on that plan as well. He couldn't he couldn't bring himself to do it. Which, again, I guess ties into the Child of Destiny thing. Like, if Xehanort is going to go down that path, he saw Vidar couldn't do it, and he's like, no, it really... 
it really has to be me. Like this person that I looked up to and right. respected couldn't go through with it. But I can. I am I am strong enough to do this. It it has to be me. And that's why yeah. that's why it's so then Boulder steps in and it like, okay, time to start. Time to start a killing. Time to start a slash <laughs> slashing folks. Jesus. Yeah. All these different methods of summoning Kingdom Hearts, which I guess we can get to in its own its own discussion as that's well. That's actually but- I do have that on a different <laughs> A discussion point because right I, I, when i was looking through all this stuff i was like hold on so you can use 13 darknesses you can use 13 lights you can use one light pure and one dark pure or pure, sorry one pure dark one pure light mm-hmm. and then you can also use the world's hearts and you can also use the seven princesses hearts it's like what the i wondered what? about that i almost wondered if like the seven lights because because the master of masters talks about these seven crowns and i was like oh crowns go for princesses i wonder if like these crowns condense the light of a world's object into like a person, into like a human form or something. But I don't know. I'll like, we'll <laughs> talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. That's fine. No, no. <laughs> cut yeah, that, yeah. cut that. All right. That is interesting. Though. I didn't, I missed that. Um, so we fight Tringhorn, fight the big beastie. Um, and we look exhausted, but uh, Bolder doesn't seem that exhausted afterwards. Because obviously mm-hmm. he wasn't the one fighting. <laughs> um, and yeah, at this point, I guess Erica still believes that he can purge the darkness, but I don't know. I don't think they. <laughs> like, I wonder if they could. Well, I think. Yeah. Like, if they potentially could have, but. I don't think so. I, I think they were Erica's so intertwined at that point, right? Because wasn't the whole thing. They couldn't extract Xion or Ventus from Sora's heart because they had essentially joined Without hearts with them. It, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we even see that with Venetus and, and Ventus. Like, yeah, true. Venetus was like a yeah, totally somehow true. grafted into his heart. Yeah. Completely, completely true. I think the one of the... I wasn't expecting it at the end scene where Baldur's all chained up and stuff. Xanor just kills him. I was like, holy heck. He was hesitating like, at he doesn't first. Even... Like when, when Baldur was only on the floor after he and Ericus locked, locked Keyblades. And like he was holding the keyboard right. up high, it's like I'll do it, but then he kind of hesitated. But I think once they had that chat, he knew. Yeah. He was like, no, this is, yeah, slash. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting it all. I was like, whoa, <laughs> damn. <laughs> I like the way that the chain is coming like out of the, out of the keyboard. I don't know. It was almost like obviously there's vibes of Ericus's um, chains that he does from the Master Defender, but it does almost mm-hmm. look like the chain from the cage for um maybe i'm wrong oh the keychain yeah but i obviously it's the wrong end of the keyblade but i don't know i, I did get that vibe at first but maybe it was yeah. the same but it doesn't have obviously like the hook that grapples on i'm pretty things. sure they're the same as because right, it must be i mean i could be thinking about it wrong but i'm pretty sure in 0.2 when aqua uses the master defenders chains they're the same yeah and i always thought they were you know the bonds of the person right so, I, but I guess it's the keyblade. I suppose. Hmm. Another topic, another time. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So then, attack, 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 and yeah, Hoda comes out, does her thing, and then her heart flies away at that moment, which I thought was really strange. So I guess was her heart like stashed inside one of her upper classmates, and then stashed inside, say or not? Because. <laughs> I guess we still don't really know the mechanic of like how they actually summon them well, back she from came the final back. world. Well, did we see all the hearts descending and becoming people or did they just appear? It could be right. I thought they appeared from the light, but... They might have just appeared. I don't actually remember. But I mean, that would indicate that they all came from the final world to me at least. Yeah. So I just have to assume they didn't... Either one didn't animate it or two, we didn't see her heart floating away. Way, that's right. I'm pulling up the scene now. Yeah, yeah. So we we walk up, and we see the light, and then they just they appear in the light, like it's okay. not hearts floating down to join them. They just appear inside the light. They just appear. Okay. Yeah. So, and obviously, we don't know quite the mechanic of how that works. Like, if a heart's literally summoned there, but because uh, when they f- do, we see the other hearts floating away, or do they their bodies just disappear? When Balder kills them, 
I don't think we see them floating away, but I could be wrong because it cuts before they actually do. Yeah, so I think it would be the same thing there. Which, but, that's kind of interesting. But, I wonder what that means. Well, Hoda's different though, because her heart definitely implants itself inside Zaya Nord. So the heart must be present yep. in the in the underworld. Oh, okay, so the, yeah, heart, no, you're the right. heart itself came from the world of... The final, the final world. world. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I think I better remember these things cells by now. Our brain cells are I really need to cut this in chronological order because it's so hard, like, zipping around <laughs> the points. Yeah. I've got... It's mostly cut together. I was thinking about doing it as well. I just for my done, own. Like, a couple of bits done, yeah. I was going to put mm. some, like, Birth by Sleep stuff in there, like, any more times that they reference, like, the two kids together. Um, right. Uh, Erica, since I am not... I've just been lazy. Like, four things I want to work on at the, right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so cruel is destiny can be so cruel. And there's the words that he finally understands. Um, and then... The words he finally understands? Oh, oh, oh. It's like, yeah, I finally see the truth of those words. So, no, sorry, I'm cutting back to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, now you're good, you're good. Um, destiny can be so cruel. Yada, 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 yada. And a month later... So, obviously, you know, Brack hasn't shown his face at all. Like, they really think that he's dead. Yeah. Oh, grave, 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 graves. Um, and yeah, I guess they've just been depressed and not talking to each other, but... And they finally see each other at these graves here. Um, yeah, you could... I guess we don't know for certain, but... Maybe whatever the, the idea of, like, Mickey going and visiting Scala is might expand on the actual life of Scholar itself, but yeah, Odin is keen to have them take their Mark of Mastery exam pretty soon, which is interesting. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's not taking any more new candidates, which is like, okay, so Keyblade so the last basically, yeah. Two. Sort of down into and a crazy little world. Yeah. Which I guess is why people start thinking that he's potentially Yen Sid, but I, I don't see it at all. I don't think so. I really I don't. mean, I don't mind being wrong, but it seems odd that, and I'd have to actually go, uh, yeah, before I say anything about whether it is him or not, I think I'll spend time looking back through Yen Sid's dialogue and seeing if he maybe makes some kind of mention about being a previous master or something. Mm -hmm. But I honestly get the vibe that they're just kind of incorporating Yen Sid because of the whole master's apprentice or whatever from uh, Fantasia. I mean, that makes sense to me. But I mean, also, like, he does like moving his island around. Like, he likes being isolated, so, like, I can see <laughs> yeah, that being a thing. But also, like, that... Because I think Mickey makes some comment in Keen March 3's, like, loading screens that, like, who knew the... Had a playful Yen side. had such a... Yeah. And we don't really see that with Odin. Hmm. He's very, like, you know, serious and to the point. And yeah, I'll have to look up that scene again for Birth by Sleep. Where they're talking through the mirror, Americus and Right. I think Yen said I'm pretty sure Yen said's confirmed. I just have to see who the other one is. I mean, Zeno makes a lot of sense as well if if that's the yeah. discussion that they have. Zeno does make sense, so Um Yeah, and then uh Braggart has his whole reveal. Which I don't know, was cool. <laughs> it caught me off guard yeah yeah because i guess it's such like an obvious i don't know like the second i saw him it was like it's literally way too obvious to be Vrag guy it can't be Vrag guy like lucius think, here yeah. somewhere like it's definitely one of these people but i wouldn't make yeah. it the guy who's already called break yeah so close to break i think whale was saying she liked that because it's like you <laughs> you you're so like secretive with your audience that like putting it right in front of their faces is just not something people would th even conceive like not possible. Oh, 100%. And it's like, wow, a hundred percent. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Yeah. I mean, I ruled him out immediately. It was just like, okay, well if it's going to be anyone, it can't be him because that's, that's yeah. too obvious. <laughs> Which I guess is I'm pretty sure Mike 
clever trick. Literally, was like, it has to be him. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's totally him. And I was like, damn, he did call it. He stick to his guns. <laughs> but yeah, it really does change the game watching it back, knowing that it's um, yeah, it's a cool little clues you get. Like seeing his like little facial reactions sometimes, and I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um. Yeah, and then I've seen the secret ending back to the Charter Destiny side of the Wiki Which you can watch Damo's video on. Right here. Right here. Um, right on the screen. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like the idea of... And we can talk about this later, but... Because he's referring to the Child of Destiny. It's something that he believes, that the player believes, right? Will mm-hmm. save the world from... From what sounds like the, the final page of the Book of Prophecies. Sounds like they're all aware of this thing that's going to happen. But whereas the foretellers, that was the final page of their book. For whatever reason, these guys believe that it's different. It's something will change that outcome. So right. the question is like, because they're, I guess they're all basing this off Ephemer's copy. Yeah, Ephemer's copy of the Book of Prophecies, right? Mm-hmm. Which maybe it gets handed back to Brain at some point. Who knows? But if they're all basing this <laughs> off Ephemer's copy of the Book of Prophecies, does, does his one, the one that Ava gave to Brain initially, have a different ending to it? Brain basically says That's, that he yeah. didn't read it. So... His brain didn't read it. He said he didn't read it. Yeah, he said I never got a chance to use this, but don't hesitate if you ever want to have a look through it, Eric um, Ephema. Wasn't he constantly looking through it? <sighs> Tell me about it. He was looking through a book that has the same freaking art asset as the Book of Prophecies, but I guess he didn't want to read the very important book. <laughs> that he... Yeah, no, he didn't. I totally missed that. I 100% thought he was constantly looking through the. Huh. He only looks at it when the Ven. When the imposter stuff starts happening, he's like, maybe the answer's in here, and he pulls it out of his like, uh, out of his like waist pocket. Interesting, waist jacket. Okay, that makes sense actually. Then, so yeah, and I don't know, because there is, <laughs> there's a book on the table. Like he walks in and starts reading a book, and maybe that's the original Book of Prophecies, like not his copy, and he's just like starts reading that. But uh, well, maybe it's just something you just okay, meant to ignore. Yeah, because I was thinking right, because I find it really interesting. That the Master of Masters is like, here's the Book of Prophecies, you know, here's what's going to happen. And then all of the foretellers seem to think this is the big war that's going to happen. And then after that war happens, then the next thing, like the next interpretation is, oh, now this war is going to happen. And then the next interpretation is the Kingdom Hearts 3 war is going to happen. It's like, yeah, is, are these, like, is the Book of Prophecy itself changing every time a a war is averted. That's exactly what or, or it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it like they all have different copies or like, is it really just that it is the kingdom hearts three ending or maybe not even the kingdom hearts three one. I don't know. I mean, it could I mean, be I kind of personally think it is the kingdom hearts three one, especially cause they like quote it and then it happens. I think young Xehanort quotes it like, you know, and it came to pass like light expired and darkness prevailed or whatever the, the line is. I mean, it It could be, like, deliberately non-specific enough that they could interpret it. I mean, it, it's tricky, right? Because, like, how did they live, the, the foretellers at least, mm-hmm. and not see themselves marching towards, you know, literally following the exact beats that were going to lead them to their own deaths yeah. anyway? Like, and, oh, I guess I said it's going to be pissed off right now. There's the whole thing about the quote-unquote, like, lost page, which deals with the trader. So, does the lost page cover... Everything right. does it cover everything that was going to happen at that point in time? Yeah. Um. Like, I mean, obviously, yeah, the Master Masters has weird. to literally write this book. I mean, maybe. Uh, again, <laughs> it's always worth keeping in mind that he could be intentionally misleading and doing this all yeah. to steer things directly where he wants them to go. I um, think that's that must be what it is, right? He's seeing the future, and maybe his way of changing it is to alter it, right? Subtly, right? Like, you're writing enough to make it seem like this is what's going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm so... I'm, like, Master Master's top character that I want to learn more about. Absolutely. If you're if you're sitting here right now and you can see 100 years into the future and you write down something on in your, in your book, you write it down, but the fact you've written it down now changes the future. Like, okay, people are aware of what's going to happen, <laughs> so they deliberately try and avoid it. They have a fixed object in time that can change the out, alter, you know, the change the outcome of the future. 
Right. Now they try and avoid it. It doesn't change what you wrote, right? You still wrote down that word. You, mm-hmm. Unless you now go back and change, you know, you rub out, you know, you delete what you've already written and rub, write something else in instead. All right. You still wrote those words, but the outcome, but the future you wrote about may no longer exist. So the more you keep writing, the more the future keeps changing. Or I guess once you finally finish the book and then you look again, you go, okay, what can I see now? Now it's all different. Is it what mm-hmm. I want to be different? Because like I was thinking, yeah, maybe he just writes things to alter the future and then looks at it kind of says, thing. Okay, right? is, it, is it how I wanted it to go? Okay, sick. Let's lock it in. <laughs> like you've, you've ah, yeah, that's created it. It's not like it's not in, like people are aware of the object, right? They are aware of the object and basing their actions around that object. Mm-hmm. So it's clearly like it's not just a passive observer, observer that's writing down things. It is meant to be read and people are basing their outcomes based on what the future is going to hold. Yeah. Uh, basing their actions, I should say, on on what the book says will happen. So, surely that changes things. Like, that... To me, that must change things. Unless the future is always set in stone and writing the book itself is an action that is necessary to relate to the future that, that you are seeing. But I mean, I don't think I don't the, think yeah. it's mm. it's definitely not clear by design yet, right? Like they even ask the question in the game. They say, if you wrote something down, isn't that what would be in the book? Isn't that what would, what would have changed? Like Brain asks mm-hmm. either that on the hill. So you're meant yeah. to be asking those questions, I'm sure. And yeah. it's not meant to be a definitive answer. Well, even the whole like Lushu, like observe and don't, you know, don't do Interfere. anything but observe. Yeah. And then he steps in and it's like. Which is, so, what, he, which is, is what he was meant to do. Yeah right oh wait right because they were both given like two roles right well weren't they given like the the fake role and then the one there's ah i need to go back and watch those actually (laughs) because i feel like he like subvertively like gave them a a different role in union cross like a sub role i mean yeah he basically did like there was the true role and then the secret role that no one else was to know about but I mean, they knew about it, but they had their like publicly facing one. The rest of the foretellers could know yeah. about. But, but I don't know. It doesn't really make sense for Lucia to have one of those because. <laughs> but he does, right? Like he he knows what's on the one page, even though he's not supposed to read it. I don't he know. has so many questions. He has some knowledge of that lost page, yeah. And we we don't know the mechanics of that at all. Like, did he yeah. overhear it? Did he steal a glance? Did he, uh, who knows? But, um, or is he just? We also don't know like what what the master. We still like what three conversations with the master of masters, but surely they spoke about a great many more things. Um. Well, okay, so yeah, okay, this goes okay. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> we need to, we need to start wrapping up, but yeah, I do have like one more note about um. All right, well, we need to talk about the player as well. Player being like, the secret ending and stuff. Oh, man, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> um. Okay, the one thing I did want to touch on is the Lushu and the Master of Masters apparently have trapped away in their heart a darkness. Is that... Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> Allegedly, right? But yes. I don't... Doesn't he... I know Lushu fights a darkness, but he doesn't capture that one, right? We don't know what he does. We have... All we see is that, you know, Lushu's like, you're the only thing in my way, and darkness is like, and you're the only thing in mine like they're clearly both acting is that the scene where he's like you know five got destroyed in the in the war or did he say seven got destroyed in the war uh the darkness says after the war six of us remained so seven right so that allegedly means those set because odin talks about the seven being trapped in the foretellers and then the four getting trapped or the he knows the four are trapped in the data world or at least the realm between is what he calls it um and then, and then he, two, and, you know, but then, I guess the Venus. common theory is that two of them have disappeared at that point. They don't know. Uh, sorry, they were destroyed when Daybreak Town was destroyed. That's the common theory. Yeah. Even though, but guess, Xehanort knows Venetus is one of them. Xehanort eventually learns that yes, is Ven is harboring one of them, and yes, Venetus is one of them. Yeah. So then there's still one loose that we'll learn about in Missing Link, I guess. I suppose. Yeah. It's wh- whatever the hell it is. It's the one that Lucy was confronting. Um. And we don't know what happened. Which, again, that's so, like okay. the biggest mystery of the Union Cross to me is what the hell that darkness did. 
the one with Maleficent? Yeah, or- yeah, this the, which is the same one that talks to Lucy later, but yeah. Oh, and is that the one that supposedly is the missing one? Yes. Ah. I just assumed he just went back with the... Wait. Oh, that's the one that fights against... The him and Ventus clash. So that would be the one... No, so that's the one... Oh, it's a different one. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Man, I'm so rusty on my Union Cross Okay, knowledge. so okay, let's... If, if, if everything's accurate, there's seven inside... You know, there's one inside each of the four tellers plus Lushu plus Master of Masters, right? So that, mm-hmm. that's the seven. There's also the four that confront the player plus player, Ephemer. Skull. And Skull. And, yeah, Ephemer. So that's that four and of them. So they're up they to 11 in total. Into... There's the one yep, 11. that met Elivacid in the Enchanted Dominion, took her all the way back through Data Daybreak Town, went back with her into the real world. So they both popped back into the real world. And Maleficent goes off into the future and it stays there. And then a few minutes later, Lucia walks in and says, oh, hello, what you doing here? Ah, right. So, that's the okay. same one. Then, then there's also the one that possesses Ven, gets in Mikil Strelitzia. They have the fight with the player and all the other f- union leaders. Yeah. And like and then get five people the and they're able to beat it. And then, it, yeah, oh. he, it, he hides in the corner of the room and then Ven basically absorbs it back into himself and yeets off into the future. Right, okay. But yes, th- there is that final one talking to Malif- um, talking to Lushu, to Lushu, and we don't know what happens to the to the two of them. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. I'm on, I'm caught up. <laughs> Which yeah, I think is probably one of Union Cross's biggest lingering mysteries is what was the result of that mm-hmm. conversation. Because I guess at that point he stops being in his. Oh no, he still is an observer. Yeah. I'm- I mean, he's definitely betraying. If he, <laughs> he's definitely not just observing at that point anymore. He's like actively taking a role in, like, no, this is for me. I ain't doing this for the master. I'm doing this for me. Mm. Mm. And I, yeah, which is interesting that everyone at that point seems to think that. Well, the prevailing theory is that darknesses were destroyed as Daybreak Town was destroyed. So do they think that Lushu? No, no one can know. I mean, there's basically. Yeah. Well, well that's, that's which not is true, weird, right? Because Lucia talks to Brain afterwards, so no matter what happens, soon after Lucia's going to talk to Brain. The darkness, who and knows then where Brain's going to pass it down, and it's going to get telephoned or whatever. If yeah, no matter if if Lushu just goes, oh hey, by the way, guess what I just did? I killed a darkness, and tell it to all <laughs> your family, tell your friends. Right. Um. Sure, but we don't know what was said. We don't know what was passed down. Yada yada yada. All we know is that Brain and Lucia have a very right. quick conversation that we see. And we don't know what happens to Brain either. Like, whatever happens to that room with our old pal Lucia there is a, is a pretty big importance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have we veered off the tra- track enough? <laughs> I think uh, I think we're back on track. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I suppose, you know, Child of Destiny stuff we talked about a little bit. And maybe we can go into yep. it. It's its own whole proper thing in a different time. But... um. Yeah, because I love that concept of of building up this child, constantly reinforcing the idea that you are special, that you are this, you know, uh, prophecy waiting to happen. And so your entire life is dedicated to testing your limits, waiting until you're ready, like you're bestowed this ability and then, you know, getting corrupted because of that. Right. Arrogant. Not, I wouldn't say arrogance, but just um, instilled, instilled like belief that you are this sacred vessel or prophecy yeah it's very interesting yeah i mean and in hindsight that has definitely clouded his actions and motivations through basically the entire series because you would think you're doing like the 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 call of god or whatever i'm like right like yeah this is what destiny has in store for me i am this sacred person yeah Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah we kind of got off track but yeah it was the idea that is is the child of destiny written about in the book of prophecies or is there some other method of passing that information down and sharing yeah. that information around like, i would assume right because the whole thing is about bloodlines right so this right. child of destiny would go hand in hand i think with with the story that missing link is going to tell us okay 
This is where does the information come from, though? I guess is what I'm saying. Like, is it? Oh, F, you're Ephraim's child. Ephraim, he saved us all. You, you're his ascendant. Wow, you must be the. It's a descendant of a great hero, a descendant of a great keyblade wielder. Must be the one that will right. save yada yada yada. Which, if that is true, then it's going to turn out that Sora is someone's grandkid, great grandkid. <laughs> well, I have seen his mom, so we know that exists. <laughs> well, I hadn't seen her. We've heard her. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it would either have to be an alternate copy of the Book of Prophecies, or maybe not even alternate, just you know, portion that we haven't been told, or Lushu directs that, or yeah. I always think of that the like the headquarters, like the whatever organization Sigurd belongs to. Mm-hmm. Again, we I know nothing about them, but I get the vibe that there's some sort of like society that is guiding Scala in accordance with the Book of Prophecies. Yeah. Like they have reverence for FMR. They knew when Brain was going to arrive, yeah. so therefore they have some knowledge of the Book of Prophecies. Um, True. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're like propagating this idea of like, oh yeah, no, no, we believe. We're this ancient order that believes in the coming of the child of destiny and we have to do everything Just, to make sure that because right. I was like, okay, what's the gameplay missing link gonna be about? And I was like, is it's gonna be some sort of like time police where it's like, oh, oh anomaly detected, anomaly detected. We have to set the timeline back on track to right. the book of prophecies. Like, oops, there's an uprising in this world, gotta quell that because it's not written about mm-hmm. in the book. We have to make sure again, and now I'm going to like sacred timeline <laughs> stuff from from Marvel again, but like like, I don't know, just, is that what we're going to go to the Disney World? Is that what we're going to be doing in these times? Like, right. Just, I don't uh, know. D- the, the more you talked about, like, the Child of Destiny and, like, the, the sacred bloodline, the, the sacred order, like, it's so, it reeks of, of uh, Star Wars. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, Anakin sure. is brought Prophesize up to be this, this exactly. yeah, like, told from, like, his childhood, hey, you're the one that's going to bring balance to the Force. Right. You're going to be the one that does amazing things, but... It, you're told this all your actions leading up to that's like all right i'm doing the right thing or at least i believe i am i don't know actually with that but you know you are told from the very early age that you're going to do all these amazing things so it's like it's a lot of pressure <laughs> too much pressure i think for a kid i think it's it's like because you've watched all the clone wars now right the star wars clone yeah, wars. yeah. spoilers I, yeah Spoiler. i won't get into details <laughs> but i think clone wars is such an amazing job of like fleshing out like it's it's there in the prequels, but it's just buried in like some of the worst dialogue you've ever heard. Well, and yeah, yeah, kind of like I mean, to be honest, like there's some scenes that are just really bad in this first three movies. But the core idea is solid. It's like, yes, they are the quote unquote good guys, but they are so tied up with their bureaucratic crap that, and this they're like accordance to this ancient order that honestly has a lot of like bad things going for it, like the the forced denial of your emotions and the celibacy and all this stuff that yep. like like repress all these parts that make you human that make you you know a unique person and you know pledge fealty to this we're gonna, we're gonna steal you away from your childhood home at birth and raise you to be you know in live in accordance with this order and don't you know don't stray because of the dark and you're so blinded by fear of the yeah. dark that like if they'd nurtured that side of anakin instead of you know trying to shh, don't talk about it shh, 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 like yeah you know if they just let yeah, him just love padme it. yada yada like things could have been so different but Mm-hmm. They basically caused their own demise by repressing all these parts. And then, you know, he found comfort in the dark side and then, you know, blah, 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 It, I don't know. I mean, obviously, yeah, we, we can talk about the Star Wars parallels endlessly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Ericus is probably the best Kingdom Hearts representation of that where he's just so corrupted, not corrupted by the light, but well, partially corrupted I mean, by the light. Like it's his anger that makes him attack the, the three friends. It's his fear that makes him attack Ven, right? It's... It's the same emotions mm-hmm. that drive him, no matter how much he tries to. Which is funny. That right. It's played by Mark Hamill. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, I don't think that's well. I don't know if that, how much of a coincidence that is, but yeah, yeah, Who knows? <laughs> it's good times. All right, have we talked about Dark Road? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Dark Road will come uh, up with more of our discussions, but oh yeah, uh, there's there's so much in Dark Road that I think is it's gonna be really interesting to. Yeah, just to, to apply to, you know, previous games, the new games. Spe- Missing Link, I think it's going to be... I'm so excited for Missing I can't Link. Wait. I really can't wait. Yeah. Please get in the beta. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Cross your fingers. <laughs> new Zealand, come, come on. on baby. You're always in, the, in these weird tech demo, on, baby. early access stuff. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed. But, uh... Um, but yeah, 
Uh, thank you, Water, for this fun episode yeah, no, zero of you. State of the Heart. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess at this point we'll ask for any... Yeah, I guess... It, <laughs> I know there's a lot of ground we covered here, but I'm sure there will be parts that people disagree with. Like, I mean, we covered so many things, like, you know, all the way from our yeah. interpretation of the Dark Road story through to my stupid idea for the quote-unquote correct order to play this series in. But, I mean, if you have any <laughs> comments to, or, you know, agreements, disagreements... Yeah. Because that's the fun part about the series. I really love that you can generate so much discussion from it. Um, yeah. So, I'm really keen to hear what people think. And it, if there's a topic yeah, I mean, you guys want to hear um, us talk about, we have, like again, like an ideas board full of stuff that we want to talk about and we want to bring up. Um, but I would love to hear people's um, ideas as well. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, if, if we missed something or we had different interpretation than you, definitely leave a comment down and we'll... I think, yeah, we, we want to, like, read people's comments at the very beginning of our show. So, like, you know, especially if we, we got something wrong um, or, you know, if you guys have a, a, a different interpretation that, you know, fits better with the storyline or or maybe some missing facts that we missed out on, definitely leave them below and, yeah, we'll get to them. That's the idea. So, the plan is to do, I think we're going to do two of these a month is the current plan. So, yep. um, yeah, if you enjoyed this, if you found us on youtube or on a podcasting service then we really appreciate that and uh we'll hopefully have if we have lots more for you guys yeah thank you guys for listening if you listen this long it was a very long long discussion but <laughs> i mean that this is this is the entire like the entire premise like we literally this is just pretty much a conversation me and damo have maybe a couple times a month and yeah just going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole like this was a bit more structured i think it was just funny um, compared to what we usually yeah, do, yeah. yeah. We want to have like a yeah. We want to have it actually a topic and not just you know ramble endlessly. Even though we kind of kind of did, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's, yeah. Always a fun time. Glad that we could actually finally record um, some of our discussion and yeah. Absolutely. Look forward to the next episode. Absolutely. Okay, but yeah, with that we'll say thank you very much and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.